Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, I'm not supposed to have my Pororo thing, but um, I did a lot of updating um, with my settings because of how weird stuff was last time. So I updated my OBS. Um, I'm not sure if that was a good decision or not. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna have to see if it was, um, and I also updated some other things, so we're gonna see. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. Yeah, I know, Yumi sleeping with a Pororo plushie. <laughs> I know for, um, a lot of you, uh, it's, it's in the afternoon and evening, so good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to everyone. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> Oh my word. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep the Pororo. Let me see really quick. That's so funny that that turned on. I wonder when that happened. Let's see. I think it's this. Aha! <laughs> we're having all sorts of technical issues. We're just starting out here. <sighs> I hope y'all are doing well. Um, I'm glad to see no messages saying that I'm stuttering. That's good. <laughs> I was really nervous because last time it, we had the weird stuttering issue. I still have no idea what was going on there, but um, yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad it doesn't seem to be repeated this time. That's excellent. But yeah, um, <laughs> it's true. Mornings are full of technical issues. <laughs> Oh my word. I thought um, it's been a really long time since we just had like a proper Zatsudan. And here's the thing. I'm not sure that this is going to be a proper Zatsudan <laughs> because I've prepared a bunch of slides. Um, it's going to be another Yumi PowerPoint. Um, I've got a lot of shows that came out in spring and I've got some things I'm really excited for coming out in summer, so I thought it would be a really good opportunity just to talk about everything. Talk about um, all of the things that I've watched, <laughs> my thoughts on, on different things, and uh, yeah, I, I think it would be pretty decent. And then um, if we have any time, I'll probably just swap over to my, my other scene and we'll just hang out and just chat. Chat and hang out, um, enjoy stuff, so. <laughs> So yeah, um, I watch entirely too much anime each season, like entirely too much anime. Um, but yeah, hopefully my anime addiction will be helpful for those of you who don't watch entirely as much as I do, which is probably good. You probably get more sleep than I do. <laughs> uh, so, um, I know some of you do actually watch the same amount as me, and bless your hearts, I hope that you're all sleeping okay. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to keep track of. But I hope this will still be fun, even if you've watched all these shows too, so. Oh my word. Yeah, I know, PowerPoint time. <laughs> what is sleep? Is that a concept? Great question. I don't know. I'm still pursuing it. I actually got to bed, um... I think I got to bed at like one last night. I was really proud of myself. Like, <laughs> I feel like a lot of times before, um, before streams, uh, or just in general, I'll, I'll not get quite enough sleep. So I actually got like, I don't know, what is that? Like seven hours? That's pretty good. That's pretty good for me. <laughs> seven hours is pretty good. So I don't know. I need to get more sleep, y'all. No, you were in a good morning. Y'all are not late whatsoever. <laughs> you all have arrived just in time. Um, so yeah, there is a lot that came out in spring 2023, um, which that season, that's like April through June is um, that anime season. And it was absolutely stacked. There was, there was a ton of anime that came out. So <laughs> I was pretty busy watching a lot of that. So I'm pretty excited to share a lot of that with y'all. Um, that being said, <laughs> even though I made this PowerPoint, I'm going to try really, really hard not to make this a lecture on all of my favorite anime. Um, I've tried to put together slides just as like reminders for myself, as well as like pictures from the different shows, because I feel like it's sometimes helpful to see what a show actually looks like um, and like some of the moments that I've enjoyed from them. I'm also trying to keep this as spoiler-free as possible. <laughs> uh, 
Obviously, for folks who have like seen a show, like when I make certain references, you'll probably know what I'm talking about, but I'm trying to make it so that for people who haven't seen the show, I'm not just spoiling the whole thing. <laughs> so we're, we're going to make our best effort there. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes, you can use your hall pass, magical. I, um, you, you've you been given permission. You can go use the restroom. <laughs> Class is still in session, though. Yumi's uh, PowerPoint will commence. You can join when you get back. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, um, I'm going to be totally real. There is one show that I talk about at the very end of this that I totally failed. It's just a lecture. It's just a 17-slide lecture, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried really hard to make it interesting, but I realized that I had to talk about, like, the history of the show and, like, all of the different iterations of it in order for it to make sense. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, I'm sorry about that in advance, but everything else, everything else, I hope, will not feel like a lecture. <laughs> But yeah, I've got a lot of shows to talk about, um, so buckle in, hang out. We're going to take a look at my favorite from last season. There's a lot. I actually had to cut out slides because there was too many. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of shows that came out in spring 2023, um, and I liked a lot of them. And so I kind of had to pick and choose my absolute favorites to talk about. And then I've got a section about other shows that I enjoyed. And then we're going to hop into summer 2023 and the things I'm hyped for. So anyway, without further ado, let's do it. Let's talk about spring 2023, which was absolutely stacked. It had so much anime. It was absolutely insane. Um, there is some anime that uh, I'll also talk about um, that I haven't seen, but I also know were quite good. So uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about, though, is Hell's Paradise which is also called Jigoku Raku. Um, and I'm saying that now because I have a tendency to, to call it Jigoku Raku. So if I call it that, it is Hell's Paradise. It is the same show. Um, yeah, I really liked this show, y'all. It was really good. <laughs> It was really, really good. I had a suspicion I was going to like this show a lot um, because it's made by MAPPA. And I really, really like MAPPA's uh, anime that they've been doing recently. They have been making absolutely incredible action and horror anime. Um, I absolutely adore Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, Chainsaw Man was unbelievable, <laughs> like extremely good. So when I saw that they were going to be the ones doing uh, Jigoku Raku, I anticipated liking it quite a bit. And yeah, um, I did. I liked it a lot. <laughs> It was extremely good. Um, it is horrifyingly gorgeous. The animation is incredible. Um, MAPPA is like in their golden age right now where everything they touch is just beautiful. <laughs> it's really good. Um, they also like the source material itself is just kind of like built for having really good character writing. I came to love a lot of the cast very quickly, and I was pretty impressed with how they did storytelling. And yeah, no, it's um, it's really good. <laughs> oh god, um, they also make some of the best OPs, like just hands down. They're so well animated, and they're horrifying, and they're wonderful. Like this is a shot that I got um from the OP, and it's so good. <laughs> It's so good. <sighs> yeah, here's the thing. I, I I worry. I worry for their staff because like this stuff looks so good that um I always I, I worry that they're probably working themselves to death. <laughs> like it's it's yeah, it's a lot. Um so anyway, hoping that they're they're uh getting enough rest because they make absolutely incredible anime. Um this particular anime I thought was really good. Um, it's technically a seinen, but you've definitely got a little bit of that like shonen action energy that's in it. And I feel like a lot of action or shonen anime try to do the whole like tying emotional growth to battles. So this is a thing that you're going to see in a lot of classic shonen. Um, and sometimes it's done really well, and sometimes it's a little cliched where you're like, oh, really, now all of the pieces have finally come together. Now in this important battle, now everything makes sense. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can sometimes be kind of cliched when it happens. 
Um, I would say that uh, Hell's Paradise does this really well. Like it didn't feel cliched whatsoever. There were really important emotional beats that happened, but they were relevant to what was happening. And it felt really nice where like, if there was emotional growth that happened throughout battles, it felt legitimate. It didn't feel like it was um, played out or, and yeah, I don't know. I was just really impressed. It didn't feel cliched whatsoever. It felt like it was just very natural with the way that things progressed. So yeah, um, I liked that a lot because I really love it. Like when it's actually done right, when you do actually have emotional beats and characters grow and they work through different things and like that can happen during battles. I think that they did a really good job with this. Um, not only that, but the power system that they have, I really liked it a lot. <laughs> I thought it was very clever, um, the way that they ended up kind of revealing things as time went on. Um, it's not like a one-for-one one comparison because I think that the best power system I've ever seen is still Nen from Hunter x Hunter, but it reminded me of that and like for a show to remind me of Nen is pretty impressive. <laughs> I, I thought that that was pretty good. Um, I also love the extended cast like a lot. Um, Yuzuriha is wonderful and I love her. Um, <laughs> I also loved Mei and I loved so much of the cast. It was really, really good. Um, yes, no, I, so I am someone who is pretty comfortable with gore um, as well as horror and body horror. Um, and they did an excellent job in this particular show. So yeah, it was, it was good. <laughs> I was pretty impressed. Um, also, it has a lot of well-written women. Thank the anime gods. I swear, I feel like shows like this like have a tendency to have really well-written men, and then they just kind of forget that women are people. <laughs> and they're just like, I don't know, the women will be like two-dimensional, and they'll have like the same sorts of character traits and they'll always be like oh but i'm just gonna pursue all the men or oh i'm not powerful enough <sighs> and it's nice the show actually has like people people that are complicated and that includes the women i'm so happy <laughs> i'm so happy oh yeah it's good it's very good y'all it's great <laughs> Yeah, Sagiri is wonderful. Um, I love her so much. She is so great. They did an excellent job with that. So that was fantastic. I was so, so happy about that. Oh my gosh, thank you for the gifted memberships, Andy. <laughs> That's extremely kind of you. But yeah, praise the anime gods. Um, we actually have well-written women in an action anime. <laughs> so that's wonderful. <laughs> Oh gosh. Welcome, welcome. Oh my gosh. That's, oh, y'all are wonderful. That's extremely kind of you to gift memberships. Thank you. <laughs> oh my word. But yeah, I would say um, the biggest thing for me is if you are not okay with gore, I'm not sure that I would suggest watching this because it is quite violent. Um, the main premise is centered around people who are criminals and people who are executioners. So there's a lot of blood, <laughs> there's a lot of body horror and there's gore. Um, that being said, if you are okay with that and you want a compelling story about strength and weakness and all of the things in between, I would highly recommend Jigokodaku. It was wonderful. I want a season two so badly. <laughs> One thing I will say is they do leave off on a little bit of a cliffhanger um, at the end of season one. So if that's something where um, cliffhangers uh, are something you don't like, you can always wait a little bit to see if it gets a season two and then you can kind of binge from there. Um, but I personally was happy that I finished it. I'm okay with the cliffhanger. <laughs> I'm okay with waiting, um, until season two, so. <laughs> Toru, aren't girls cutest when covered head to toe in blood? <laughs> oh my word. <sighs> but yeah, that's, that's my, my first recommendation of the day is, uh, Hell's Paradise Jigokuraku is wonderful, and I was super impressed with it, loved it to death, would highly recommend. 
second show is very different. <laughs> We're moving from a show that is extremely gory to a show that is not. Um, Skip and Loafer is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful show that completely took me by surprise. I didn't know what to expect. I had never read the manga. Um, I heard that it was uh, very good, but I had never actually checked it out. Um, yeah, I know, it's a, it's a little bit of whiplash from Jiko Karaku to this. <laughs> um, but I love this show to death. Like, I'm gonna go and binge the manga now that this is done. It is so good, y'all. This is one of the most heartwarming, poignant series I have ever watched. Like, every single episode was amazing. I loved all the characters. I was super impressed with how well things were written. Like, dear God, I actually was kind of debating whether or not I should talk about this show first or Jigoku Raku. Um, because like, between the two of them, it was really difficult for me to pick, like, which one was my favorite of the season. Um, I would say that they're both my favorite. Like, they're on equal terms. I loved this, and I loved Jigoku Raku, like, the most. Um, and then, of course, there's a bunch of other anime that I love, too. <laughs> but, like, as far as, like, my personal number one spots, um, I absolutely loved this. Uh... I was extremely impressed with how tactful this show was. It handled some really um, real problems <laughs> with a lot of tact and empathy. Um, it didn't feel like things were contrived. It felt like there were very legitimate concerns that like people deal with. And a lot of the characters are high schoolers, but some of them are adults too. And it was a really, really good show for not only showing like real problems that are actually interesting and that you want to see the characters get through, but it shows healthy solutions to those problems, which is amazing. Like, I feel like sometimes I'll come away from shows like this being like, you know, I'm glad that they figured out how to solve this situation, but I'm not sure if I agree with the way that that was solved or that felt a little contrived with how they did stuff. No, this show is just straight up like, these are actual ways that you can solve these problems. <laughs> I was really impressed. They also are very creative. Like the main character and how she acts and who she is, I think is really important for making the show as good as it is. She acts in a way that's very different, I think, from how like <laughs> people would traditionally act in situations, but she's very genuine. And I feel like that sells this so well for me. <sighs> it's very good, y'all. The entire cast are really endearing. Every single one of them are written well. Um, the main character, the side characters, the men, the women, everyone is written super well. Um, I absolutely loved everyone by the end, which was pretty impressive. Maybe with the exception of one character, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> I think that she's supposed to be undergrowing a lot of growth, so that's okay. But yeah, it was a really, really good show, um, and I loved it a lot, and I would laugh and cry every single episode, and I desperately want more people to watch this because I think it's incredible. Um, it's just very good, so if you haven't watched it, if you're interested in an endearing story about finding joy in life, I would highly recommend this series. It's very good. You feel very good after each episode, and it makes you happy. <laughs> You might cry like I do because it gets really beautiful and emotional, but yeah, I am obsessed with this series. I can't talk too much more about it because I feel like I'll end up just spoiling huge parts of it, um, which is why I kept this section really short, but <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. I highly recommend it. Um, 10 out of 10. Fantastic. I hope it gets a season two. <laughs> okay, moving on, moving on. Skip and Loafer is great. Uh, we're gonna move into, um, some other school-related shows. Um, The Dangers in My Heart, which is also called Boku Yaba. So this show, um, is one that I've recommended, uh, not just, like, the anime, but also the manga. I'm really, really obsessed with the manga, so I was pretty excited when I got an anime adaptation. 
Um, I love both of them. The anime adaptation lived up to all of my hopes. It was absolutely fantastic, but I will say it does take about three to four episodes to really take off. Um, the first three to four episodes are definitely good, but I think that like the show as a whole becomes fantastic once you get past those. And the reason for that um, is that the main character is like an actual incel at the beginning of the series, which is definitely um, a, a very different direction <laughs> from a lot of other media. Um, like they commit to him being very socially isolated and not seeing girls as people and like struggling a lot with that and like no, oh, Andy, <laughs> thank you for the super chat. Yes, I'm so glad that you love this too. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, but that's like kind of the point is that like it's his growth as well as the growth of other characters that's like the centerpiece of the show. But I do know that when it started out, I saw a lot of um, reviews from people being like, oh God, this is too cringe. I can't do it. I can't get through this. Um, <laughs> And I will promise you that it gets better, but like the first three episodes, in particular the first episode, I would say if you can like get through the cringe of being a middle schooler and the fact that the main character starts out the way that he does, I I promise you it will be absolutely amazing. Like it is so good. Yeah, you know, Toru, <laughs> That's actually funny um, that you couldn't finish Watamote for the cringe. I also struggled with that. <laughs> like, this show is very good at very, very accurately displaying the cringe of being a middle schooler. Um, <laughs> it does a very good job with that. Um, yes, no, I completely agree. The reason most people cringe at this stuff is because they did the exact same things. And here's the thing, that's not to say that, like, um, you have to be, I guess, a, like, you can be at, like, any walk of life to enjoy this. Um, I just have to give you all a heads up because when this first came out, uh, some people review bombed it because... <laughs> People did not like the main character and also found it way too cringe. Um, like, it was very accurately displaying what it was like to be a middle schooler. So, um, please, I will promise you, it gets better. <laughs> if you can get through the first episode, it already gets way better. But, like, the first three episodes, I think, are, like, the big ones to get through. Um, because the series is about how people are complex and how they are more than just appearances. One of the other main characters in the series, Anna, her entire deal is that she is a model. Um, as a middle schooler, she went through a gigantic growth spurt, so she is a lot taller than her peers. And she is doing modeling as like a young girl. And so a lot of people tend to view her through that lens. They view her as just kind of like a bit of an object. Um, her friends obviously treat her as a person, but like broader students don't always do that. And it's nice to see that like she is a person, like her whole deal is that she's obsessed with food. <laughs> So she's constantly eating and she's just full of life and super excited and she's a kid like she's a kid still and it's great like oh, i love her i'm gonna i'm gonna try not to gush too much because it's just wonderful <laughs> she is just wonderful um but yeah it's also about how trying to enjoy life and the people that are in it is extremely valuable and it's worth pursuing. It is extremely beautiful and does a very good job of showing the relationships between two people and how they grow and how like their broader outlook on life changes. And I think that's really good. <laughs> I love the manga and the anime is also wonderful. And I was super impressed with how well animated a lot of it was. Um, the OP was also beautiful. I was a big fan. <laughs> so if you can get through the first few episodes um, and understand that the cringe is normal, um, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of that to be had. 
The character growth and the storytelling and the animation and the voice acting are all beautiful and I was a sobbing mess at the end of the season. Um, they nailed the emotional arc there perfectly. In fact, just thinking about it, I'm getting teary-eyed again. Um, <laughs> Oh god. Okay, this show is wonderful. I would highly recommend it. I just figured that I would give a bit of a heads up about like it is going to be pretty relatable in some ways, um, just as far as like reminding you of being a middle schooler. And I promise if you can get through the cringe of that, it is worthwhile. <laughs> it is worth your time. Oh my word. Alrighty. So moving on, moving on. More, more school shows. We got lots of school shows over here from, from spring 2023. Um, Insomniacs After School also completely took me by surprise. Um, I was stunned by this show. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I read the description and was like, well, a couple of kids struggling with insomnia sounds, sounds pretty relatable to my own life. <laughs> And yeah, um, Insomniacs After School, um, <laughs> yeah, definitely relatable to my own life um, and to folks who struggle with insomnia, which is a lot of people, a lot of people struggle with it. They have it pretty bad. Um, a lot of times they'll be up until like four or five in the morning. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. That happens to me too. But um, yeah, there are a couple of high schoolers who are desperate to get sleep because they are struggling to get sleep at home, and they end up finding solace by trying to get sleep together. Um, and they also, when they can't go to sleep, they end up taking up astrophotography, which is taking pictures of the night sky in order to enjoy the sleepless nights. Ugh, excuse me, sleepless nights, <laughs> not sleepless nights. <laughs> I'm so happy to see y'all are also enjoying this show. Oh god, and I'm so sorry to y'all who were- oh man, it makes me sad that y'all struggle with insomnia too. It's rough, man! It's really rough! <laughs> it's a lot to deal with. But yeah, the show does a really nice job of showing like how different people try to get through insomnia and also just taking advantage of when you are struggling to sleep. Um, I think it's really cool, like, the idea of actually going out and taking pictures of the night sky is really awesome. <laughs> I, I think that's great. Oh, that makes me really happy that some of y'all, um, are actually able to get sleep. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> oh my word. Yeah, no, for real. As, as someone who also has a lot of sleepless nights, this show was really beautiful. I was really impressed with, like, how it was put together and like the visual quality was really good <sighs> yeah it was very nice um i also really loved the reasons for their insomnia i felt that they were pretty relatable um or at least understandable um especially for the male lead um i thought that his issues with sleeping i think are pretty relatable to a lot of people um just like the idea of not wanting to lose time um, and staying up as late as possible uh, because then you don't have to face the next day. Um, and that could be like work related or that could be like just wanting to take advantage of the time that you have off. Um, and I feel like that was really good. Like it also made me kind of sad that a high schooler is dealing with this. <laughs> That was, that was very sad, um, but her reasons for struggling with sleep I won't get into, um, but they were also very sad, and I, oh, it was very good. Um, also, they, uh, like, this show inspired Bear to get back into photography again. <laughs> I was really, really surprised, like, that was something that he did when he was a lot younger, but, like, as we've gotten older, like, he just, like, hasn't had the time for it um and hasn't had a new camera and so he actually on friday went out and bought a new camera and he's been taking a lot of pictures with it oh, it's really nice it makes me really really happy um because like a lot of his creative endeavors have been cooking or like building models and things but he got really excited about the idea of like getting back into photography again and like we could we could like go out and try to do some astrophotography we could take pictures of the models that we've got and other things so oh, it's good 
<laughs> I'm pretty excited about that, so. Oh, God. Yeah, um, if you've ever been interested in photography or you just want to watch a heartwarming show that's about connecting with people, I would really recommend this, so. <laughs> And no, Isaac, he didn't photograph the fireworks. They were so, yeah, so we had, um, the country I live in had a really big holiday this last week called July 4th. And um, boy, oh boy, people sure like um, shooting off fireworks on that day and the days before and the days after just all the time at all times of day. It'll be one in the morning and there'll be fireworks for my neighbors. I don't know where they got them. <laughs> I don't understand anything. So, um, yeah, but no, he did not get pictures of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, anyway. Um, but hopefully at some point we can, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be good. Oh, but yeah, I am, uh, I am looking forward to it. I think, I think that it will be really fun that he's getting back into photography again. I didn't expect that from the show, um, but I'm really grateful for it. I'm extremely happy that that was something that he got inspired to do again. So I would say that um, regardless, even if you don't struggle with insomnia, like this is still a fun show to watch, but I feel like for folks who do struggle with insomnia, this will hit home quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh God, you all have never ending fireworks there too. Ah, uh, uh, my apologies. <laughs> It is a struggle. It is a struggle. Oh, uh, next show that we're talking about um, is Otaku Elf. Um, I had a suspicion I was going to like this show. I was right. <laughs> it just seemed like a show that I would enjoy a lot. And boy, boy, it was. Um, the show itself revolves around an elf, quote unquote, goddess. She's not actually a goddess. <laughs> She was actually isekai'd to our world about 600 years ago. Um, or actually, no, it wasn't 600 years ago. It was, uh, I think she's like close to 600 years old, but it was sooner than that because it was the Edo period. She was isekai'd to Japan during the Edo period. Yes, it's a reverse isekai. <laughs> She was summoned as a goddess, and more than anything, she's kind of just a symbol now. Um, she has, like, magic, but she's not a god, if that makes sense. Um, but she's still worshipped, and she still has a priestess, and she has a temple, and all of this stuff. Um, so her name is Elda, um, Elda the Elf. And then she has a shrine maiden, uh, who's named Koito. And uh, the entire anime is about their adventures together. <laughs> And by adventures, um, I mean that Elda is like a massive otaku shut-in. Like, she just like never wants to go outside. She doesn't want to see people. <laughs> she wants to just enjoy her time. Like, <laughs> thank you, Andy. Oh my God, yes. This is your most MVP of the season. Super underrated and underwatched. I completely agree. This show was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I feel like because of the name that it's Otaku Elf, um, I feel like some people just didn't check it out because they thought that maybe it'd be like a little silly, but oh my God, the show was fantastic. So yeah, no, <laughs> you know, it's true. She does sound like a goddess that I would worship. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Um, she's extremely relatable. She's wonderful. Um, this is just like a screen cap from the show of her shrine maiden looking at her and thinking that she is hopeless. <laughs> she is also, um, she has crippling social anxiety. Um, a lot of it is because like she knows that she looks very different from other people. And so she's very self-conscious about the fact that she's really tall and she's got really long ears. Um, but it's also just like she wants to be able to stay inside. <laughs> she wants to be able to enjoy herself. Oh, it's good. It's very good. Um, I really love the push and pull between how lazy and reclusive she is um, compared to how diligent her shrine maiden Koito is. <laughs> it's a constant source of comedy throughout the show. But I also feel like it's a really good relationship they have where they do know when to give each other a supportive push. Um, like Koito will help Elda actually go out into the world and like 
experience things, um, in addition to doing her, her shrine duties <laughs> that she's supposed to do. So yeah, I thought that was really good. It's also another one of those shows that's very well animated. I was really impressed with the character models and I was really impressed with how they moved. So yeah, I thought that was really good. Um, also, because Elda arrived in Japan during the Edo period, she is obsessed with that. <laughs> she has like a lot of knowledge from that time period. And each episode, they find a way to make it a mini history lesson. And so Elda will talk about all of these different experiences that she had um, living in the Edo period. And there will be these beautiful old illustrations that show up on screen um, in order to indicate what it is that she's talking about. And it's really impressive. Like they do a really good job balancing like the nice little mini history lessons and then just like the comedy of their current situation. It's really nice. I was really impressed. I didn't expect that from the show, but yeah. No, it was quite good. They did a good job. Um, I also love the full cast. <laughs> there are other isekai elves in it, um, and they are also wonderful, and their shrine maidens are wonderful, and I'm just gonna go and binge the manga now. <sighs> it was very good. <laughs> they did an excellent job with this show. I absolutely loved it, and I would highly recommend if you're looking for something that is really chill, that's funny, um, this was kind of like my wind down for the evening show. I would always try to finish with this one. So yeah, it was really good. <laughs> I would highly recommend it. Ooh, all right, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna, this is a decent breaking point. I'm gonna take a drink of water real quick. Alrighty. <laughs> Ooh, so I've got a couple other shows still in spring. And then don't you worry, don't you worry. At some point we will get to the the fabled 17 slide show. Um, we're not quite there yet, but we will get there. <laughs> but um, I do have a lot to say about the next couple of shows that we're going to talk about. So I figured taking a hydration break was a good idea right now. Alrighty, so... Um, another show I wanted to talk about from spring. <laughs> you know, that's true. My mouth does go kind of crazy when I hydrate. <laughs> I'm glad that you all enjoy that. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so for you all um, that aren't aware, the ancient Magus' Bride did get a season two after six years between the two of them. <laughs> um, actually, when it came out, Bear and I just went and rewatched the original and the OVAs because it had been so damn long. Like I had forgotten some of the characters. I needed a refresher on certain things. So yeah, um, the, the season two came out. Um, in particular, it's being split up into two core. So the first core, like the first 12 episodes came out this season. And then the second core is going to come out in, I think, fall. Um, so not this season, but the season after. So yeah, let me talk about this show because I have some complicated feelings about it. And before I like recommend it, I think I should give some caveats with it because there's a lot of things I love about this show, clearly since I'm watching season two and, <laughs> and I'm enjoying it. But there are some important things to talk about with this show um, before I like completely recommend it. <laughs> so um, the main character, Chise, I love her. She is someone who has been through a lot of things in her life. Um, a lot of them have been really terrible. And she has a tendency to devalue herself as a person, um, often seeing herself as dispensable or someone who can save others at the cost of herself. Um, but I love how the show is trying to help her get out of that, trying to combat this as best as possible and grow as a person so that she can find joy in life again. And I think that that's a really nice thing. Like a lot of the show centers around her personal growth, um, her moving past some of the trauma in her life and like growing as a person, which I think is really good. 
there's a lot of really great lessons in the show about how you don't have to forgive someone in order to move past it. Like, even if you understand why someone did something to you, like if you understand the reasons for why they hurt you, you don't have to forgive them. Like, <laughs> it's okay just to understand and then you can move on. Like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of shows focus on this idea. Um, anime could be pretty guilty of this too, of like... <sighs> being like, ah, oh, at the end of the day, the only way you can move forward is to forgive people. And I really love this show for being like, nah, <laughs> you can still say, no, I don't forgive you, but I can move on anyway. And I feel like that's pretty true to life. Um, <laughs> part of the reason that I do adore this show is that like, I definitely relate a little bit <laughs> to the main character, um, a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> I also do love how, like, time and time again, like, Chise is hit with the whole, like, you need to remember to value yourself. It's important. And I also do like that, like, it's a thing she struggles with. It's not something that, like, she solves overnight. Like, she continues to hit that wall over and over again. And again, I think that that's, like very true to life. Um, I feel like your problems aren't something or like struggles that you have um, about like valuing yourself, self-worth, self-care. <laughs> it's something that like takes a really long time to instill as a habit and it can be hard sometimes to run up against that. So, oh yeah, it's very good. It's very good. Um, but Okay, so things that I like about the show. We're going to talk about some more of the things that I love, um, but I do have to bring up my big caveat here. The one big thing that I struggle with <laughs> when watching this show. Ugh, the relationship that Shisei and Elias have, I think is kind of problematic. Um, I tolerated it for a lot of season one, but they kind of committed pretty hard near the end of season one and into season two. And there's a lot of issues that I have with it. I feel like it conflicts with some of her broader growth as a character. Um, and I don't always think that their relationship is very healthy. And that makes me sad because I feel like the show is all about her like learning her own boundaries and growing as a person. And I feel like the author is really, really attached to Elias. And so they've had some resistance with like recognizing that some of the relationship things that Elias and Chisei have are like contradictory <laughs> to like some of Chisei's growth. And that is frustrating. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, I mean, the show is called The Ancient Magus' Bride, so you can kind of guess what some of my issues are there. <laughs> There's some issues from the beginning, but they kind of smooth them over a little bit, and I was like, okay, okay, I'm with you. I will, I will tolerate this. I think this is fine. I understand why Elias is a character. I'm even interested in, like, his growth as a character, but then they're like... Nah, the show is called Ancient Magus's Bride. And I'm like, no! <laughs> but what if it wasn't called that? What if it was Ancient Magus's Apprentice or Friend or something? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So I won't say too much more than that because I feel like when I originally wrote this section, I actually did include some spoilers and I was like, yikes, okay, I can't do that. Um, but yeah, so that is my main caveat. There is... It seems like my thoughts aren't alone on this. Like I've read uh, lots of reviews from people and other folks who have also struggled with this aspect of the plot. So it's definitely something that <laughs> people broadly struggle with. Um, but we all seem to keep watching because we love Chisei and the rest of the cast. Um, and also, I do have to say that the mythological world building is like one of the best I've ever seen. Like... Oh, they do such a good job with it. It's so good. All of the fae and the neighbors and all the, the monsters and the creatures that she ends up running into are so good. They are super fascinating and they're very, very well animated. Like they sell like these being tangible creatures. They're so good. It's so good. So anyway, 
Um, that's why I keep watching it. <laughs> I figured that I should give that caveat. Um, oh, also, I forgot I had an entire slide. I was gonna just talk about her in general. Um, I also love Silky. She's, she's like my favorite character. <laughs> I just want her to be happy. She's such a wonderful, wonderful person who works so hard and she just like wants the people in her family to be doing well and she wants them to be happy and I love her to death. She's wonderful. <laughs> I just want her to be happy. So I also watch because I, I, I don't know, I love her <laughs> and I want to see her be happy. Oh, so yeah, um, season two has been great. Um, it's very different. Uh, there's a lot of new characters that are introduced and they're doing a lot more of like broad world building, but I still really like it. I've liked a lot of the new characters who have been introduced. I like that they're exploring sorcery because season one really focused on mages. And I like that they're exploring different types of magic. I think that's been really good. I just figured that I should mention that, like, there are some core conceits to the anime that um, are problematic. <laughs> and if you also find them problematic, you're not alone. But anyway, if you like the show, um, I don't know. I think it's worth, like, watching season one and seeing what you think. And uh, there's a couple of OVAs that are good, too. Um, they're not necessary, though. Like, you could just jump from season one to season two. Um, there's a little bit of a weird, yeah, I don't know. There's a, a big time gap between season one and season two. And the stuff that happens in there is kind of referenced a little bit in the beginning of episode one from season two. Um, but yeah, you don't need to watch the OVAs. You can if you want, they're very good though. Excuse me, I had to clear my throat there. I have that uh, morning voice problem. <laughs> Or I've just got a lot of phlegm. Ugh, geez. Let me take another drink of water, actually. Give me one second. Ugh, okay, that's a little better. Yeah. Lots of phlegm. Lots of morning phlegm. <laughs> the fish mouth <laughs> it does look like a fish <laughs> all righty we are almost at the end of last season so let's talk about a show i haven't mentioned yet it even if you are not familiar with the shows that came out last season there's a very good chance that you have heard about oshinoko it is like the thing that happened last season <laughs> Um, it kind of took the anime world by storm. Um, it has absolutely incredible animation. Like, I was kind of stunned when I watched it. Um, it was really, really, really impressive. I think it also really caught people's attention because the plot is wild. Um, I can't even begin to explain it. <laughs> And I'm not going to because uh, that's kind of the appeal, right? There's a lot of things going on. Okay, okay, all right. I, I'm a little nervous for talking about this because I have an opinion that's a little different, I think, from the general populace. Um, and I... <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Andy. Let's go, Oshinoko. Um, <clears throat> please don't let my opinion color your opinion about this show. This is my opinion. Um, there are a lot of things I love about this, um, but there are some things I wanted to talk about with the show, um, and some reasons why I haven't talked about it a little bit sooner. Um, but again, if you enjoy the show, please keep enjoying the show. These are just my thoughts on it. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move, move forward. I try to keep my spicy anime opinions to member streams. <laughs> So I don't think this is the spiciest anime uh, decision, or excuse me, spiciest anime um, thought. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna move into it. We're gonna talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to admit this didn't make my top series. Um, I do know why people love it. Um, again, I think it's it's great. I think that a lot of people have good reasons for loving it. Uh, the reason why I didn't end up really hopping onto it is because the messaging was a little erratic. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that. 
Um, because I think that the messaging was good, but I do think that sometimes it was kind of hit or miss with like <laughs> what it was that they wanted to say. Um, and ah, I didn't like the main character and I feel like that's a problem. If I don't like the main character, um, I feel like that's, <laughs> I feel like that's a problem. Okay. So this is like the one spoilery thing that I'm going to say, and it's because it happens in the first five minutes and it's to explain why, why I did not like the main character and why things just kind of went downhill from there. <laughs> No! No, Toru, is this infinitely more spicy than my hot take stream? Oh god, well, I'm just screwed then, I guess. I tried to save my, my spicy takes for my member stream. <laughs> and I'm just screwing it all up. <sighs> okay, anyway. Um, <sighs> so, within the first five minutes, this dude promises to marry his 12-year-old patient when she turns 16. And, like... I get it. I get that, like, that might not be something I'm supposed to take seriously, but, like, they kind of set it up as something you're supposed to take seriously. And the ambiguity is too much, y'all. Like, <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know. That was a bit much for me. I, I just, I couldn't get past that, and it kind of felt like things were downhill from there. So anyway, anyway, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna move on. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Despite me not enjoying the show, like, for the main character, um, I actually probably would have been on board with the show if Ai-chan um, was the main character. I, I was really, really interested in her whole deal, but unfortunately she's not the main character. Um... But anyway, um, I am still really happy that this series exists because it is excellent for highlighting the dark culture behind idols, which is like not a thing that a lot of shows are willing to talk about. Um, and it also shows how dehumanizing it can be to work in show business. So yeah, um, I was really happy that it existed because I think that that is a topic that's just not discussed enough because <laughs> like idol culture is a thing. Um, it is a huge thing and it is something that I think merits a lot more critical discussion about how we treat the idols, um, how we treat the, the men and women, um, but particularly like a lot of idols tend to be women. So, like, how we treat them um, in this show, like, the, the titular idol is 16, and she started to be an idol when she was 12. And, like, wow, that's kind of messed up. <laughs> like, that's really young to be an idol. And, like, I was really excited that this show was actually going to talk about that, because, like... Man, that is a great way to like hop into like, hey, there's some issues with this industry and it would be really cool to like learn about all of these different things and the different ways we can approach them. Um, that being said, I was kind of sad because a lot of the online discourse that I've seen about this show is kind of treating it as like an isolated incident. They're like, okay, so the everything that Ai Chan has to go through as an idol, and again, I'm, I'm trying to be very vague here so that I don't spoil things, but like Ai Chan has struggles that she goes through and there's big important things that happen in the first episode. And um, I don't know, it was kind of odd to me because it, it seemed like the general discourse was people seeing this as just an isolated incident and not representative of the industry. Like, oh, this is sad that this happened to her, but like, it's okay. Idols are still cool, right? And like, <sighs> yo, that's such a wasted opportunity. Like, let's talk about like how we treat idols and the women behind them. Like, yeah, you know, actually, that's a very fair point. It's not just the idol industry, it's the entertainment industry. Streamers, actors, like, everyone involved. Oh my gosh, yeah. No, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, You know, actually, reading your comments, that's actually, like, making me really happy. <laughs> I suspected that you all had picked up on that. I've been very, very sad that, like, I feel like the general 
<sighs> the general vibe on the internet has just been like, oh, but Aichan is just so cute. She's such a good idol. And I'm like, but that's like missing the point. <laughs> that's like missing the whole point is like the struggle that she and everyone else in the entertainment industry is going through. Let's talk about that. So anyway, the next couple slides are me talking about that <laughs> because I figured I might as well, right? Oh, and yes, no, I, I'm very happy that you all are, are, are willing to listen to my point with nuance. I feel really bad that like I personally didn't put this in my top shows, but I, I did want to talk about the positives with it and the important things because I think that like there's a reason why it's resonated with so many people. And yeah, <laughs> I think that it's worth talking about. So I think that something that the show does really well is it shows that behind every idol is a person, a person who has a lot of struggles. Um, and in particular, it's something to remember for people in the entertainment industry that like everyone has fears about living up to fan expectations and some people are compelled to lie in order to maintain their image. And that really screws with you. Like <laughs> that will mess with your head. Um, I feel like it's something that like, I don't know, to some extent, like in order to protect your identity, everybody has to like, <laughs> not be like fully truthful like obviously I, I am not going to give like my my home address and things <laughs> but this like goes beyond that like a lot of idols in particular and like celebrities and things like that you are in this position where you feel like you can't even be yourself like you have to lie to maintain your image and it's really sad like it's something that like prevents people from being people and yeah um some of you have mentioned hololive in the chat which i think is excellent <laughs> because that was the point i was going to talk about um specifically talking about vtuber idols um a lot of them feel compelled to lie about a lot of things um they lie about their age um because idols are supposed to be young and like close to high school age so they all pretend that they're a lot younger than they are um in addition to that people will lie about their relationship status or they just won't get into a relationship period because they're really scared about what that will do to their image and it's really tragic because like even people who like just want to hang out with like and particular with idols the big example i can think of is just like associating with men um, like Calliope Mori has experienced a ton of harassment just for being friends with the trash taste dudes. Um, <laughs> like she received a bunch of like really nasty super chats from people to the point where she just like, at least the last time I checked, she wasn't doing super chat reading streams, um, or she wouldn't acknowledge them live. Um, and that's kind of sad. And then there's even people who were forced to leave Hololive just because like they receive so much harassment. Um, the pink and yellow haired girl in the left is Aloe. Um, and she debuted with Hololive for their fifth generation on the Japanese side. And she had to quit two days after because people immediately recognized her and doxed her for having a boyfriend and uh she was really scared <laughs> and so she ended up having to leave which is really sad um Rusia experienced um also some wild stuff for people thinking that she had a boyfriend and yeah it's just one of those things where i was really excited when oshinoko came out because it seemed like maybe we could finally start having a conversation about like hey Idols are people. <laughs> Idols are people. Oh my God. There are people who can still have lives. They can have boyfriends. They can have girlfriends. They can have spouses. They can have children. They don't have to permanently be 17. Like, holy cow. <laughs> they can be people. <sighs> so anyway, um, that is my thoughts on the show. Um, if any, if nothing else, um, for those of you who have enjoyed the show, um, and the character drama and the amazing animation and the stories that it's been telling. I do hope that like the criticism of the entertainment industry and of the idol industry does come through because I think that that for me is like, 
a really, really important thing and something that I hope will become more of a conversation because I think that the first episode really shocked a lot of people. Um, it was very surprising to see the things that Aichan was going through and the like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my hope anyway. I'm very, very hopeful that like more of a discussion will be had because Oshinoko is like mad popular, like absurdly popular. And if it can lead the way in some sort of like <sighs> moving forward and like trying to make some sort of improvements to the entertainment industry, acknowledging that there are problems, like big systemic problems, <laughs> that would be amazing. I would absolutely love that. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, if you were interested in character drama with an absolutely wild plot, um, I would definitely suggest checking it out. Um, even if I personally had some problems with it um, and I didn't like the main character, I did still appreciate that it exists. And for all of you who love it, I am so delighted that it has gotten an anime. There's so much love that the animators have put into it. Like, God, <laughs> like they absolutely adored this property and it shows it looks so good. So, so good. <sighs> so anyway, <laughs> uh, my spicy takes, I think are over. Oh my God, we got through it. Thank you all for, for bearing with me there. I'm sorry. I know some of you all really love that show and I, I'm not saying that you can't love that show. I hope that that comes through. I'm saying that I personally had some issues, but that I still enjoyed um, like the existence of it and I totally get why people love it. So, <sighs> okay, anyway, yeah. Moving on, moving on, moving on. <laughs> so I'd originally, um, I'd originally made uh, a bunch of slides for these shows too, but like this slideshow ended up being gigantic. And so I was kind of worried about it. Um, looking at the time, I actually do have some time to talk about these really quick. So yeah, let me, let me talk about these. Um, I'm sorry that they don't have individual slides. I kind of put this here as a placeholder just in case I did have some time. <sighs> okay, anyway, I'm still reeling from getting through that section. That was the section I was the most nervous about talking about, <laughs> but we got through it. We got through it. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So um, the first show I want to talk about is A Galaxy Next Door. Um, this was a really, really cute romance. It's about, um, oh, thank you. Welcome to the membership. Welcome, welcome. I hope that you all enjoy your emotes. Oh, I've also got a bunch of uh, fun membership videos if you if you have time and you want to watch them. So feel free to check them out. Um, so A Galaxy Next Door, getting back on track. Um, it is a really cute romance about two people who are trying to be mangaka. So they draw manga together and they're doing it in the traditional way. Um, a lot of manga nowadays is drawn digitally on a tablet. So um, that helps for a lot of reasons. <laughs> There's a lot of really nice things you can do there, but they're still trying to draw manga traditionally um, where you draw it with pens and you actually have like screen tones and things like that. And it was really cute. I really enjoyed it. I was really surprised. Um, I wasn't sure if it was going to be like cliched or anything, but they did a really good job with it. The, um, excuse me, I had to clear my throat again. <laughs> We're getting through it, getting through the flummy throat. Um, but yeah, I loved how A Galaxy Next Door did a lot of the found family thing, which I personally love a lot. Um, it, oh, thank you for the super chat, sleepy time, catch you later. Thanks for stopping by, Gordon, you get some rest. I hope you have a good night's sleep. <sighs> yeah, I think that they did a really good job of like, showing how families can come together and like also it does a really good job of showing that like not all parents have their children's best interest in mind <laughs> which i think was good and again very true to life um they do a really good job of showing the strained relationships um that these characters have with their parents and like what impacts that has so yeah, if you're looking for a really cute romance, I would definitely suggest A Galaxy Next Door. It was a really sweet show. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, on the comedy train, Mashla it was absolutely hysterical. Um, I suspected I was going to enjoy it and yep, <laughs> it was really good. 
<laughs> it was very funny. Um, I definitely do think that it leans into some big tropes, but I feel like it was still very funny. <laughs> I feel like it did the tropes well, if that makes sense. Um, it was a little sad. Um, they unfortunately, I don't know, the, the, the female characters in the show, I was a little sad about. They were a little too dimensional, um, but it's fine. It's fine. There weren't that many of them, but I should give a heads up. <laughs> It's a very, uh, a lot of the characters in the show are dudes. It is like big shonen battle energy. And here's the thing, I'm, I'm definitely all for that. Um, and yeah, it's also, <laughs> it's very, 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 um, like it's, how do I explain this? Um, it's not like fully ripping off Harry Potter, but like there's a lot of things that are clearly inspired by it and they're kind of poking fun at it. And I enjoyed that. <laughs> I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, there is a lot of like, we're gonna have some set dressing that is similar and then we're just going to like lean into the absurdity of this. And I thought it was good. Um, the main premise is that it's a world full of people who can use magic, but the main character can't. Um, but he is pretending like he can so that he doesn't uh, have problems that happen to him. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, I thought it was quite funny. Also, the ED is an absolute banger. Like, the ED is super funny, and I enjoyed it quite a bit, so 10 out of 10. <laughs> you know, um, I'd actually say it's more like, um, as far as, like, protagonist vibes, I'd say it's a lot more like Mob, um, like Mob Psycho. The main character is fairly quiet, um, and he doesn't talk too much, but he's very powerful, so... Yeah, it is a bit like uh, <laughs> a bit like One Punch Man too in that regard. But yeah, no, it's it's quite funny. I enjoyed it. Um, and then the last one is another uh, romance. Um, my love story with Yamada Kun at level nine nine nine. I think it also goes by loving Yamada at level nine nine nine. Um, this one, I'm gonna be real, y'all. I was expecting not to like this. <laughs> It had like the big shoujo energy. And here's the thing, as someone who has consumed a lot of shoujo in my time, um, I was a little worried that it was going to be like, <sighs> like the rough kind of shoujo that just like doesn't have a lot of good character development and is just abstractly like, oh, the boy is pretty, so therefore I love him. Um, no, it was actually like, <sighs> I was kind of surprised, like, I came to really love a lot of the cast. I felt like they did a good job of dis like displaying them as actual people. Um, <laughs> they did uh, a very good job of like Yamada himself, um, like the main love interest is a very interesting character. Um, he's almost, I don't know, I don't want to like put ideas onto the show that aren't there, but he does strike me as like, having Asperger's or like being on the autism spectrum in some capacity and like I feel like they did a really good job of just explaining how like he exists as a person and how he interacts with other people and like the the main heroine I think is a really good foil to that because she's really boisterous she's outgoing she's fine like getting up <laughs> in people's faces and doing things and getting to know people being loud like i don't know i thought that was really good um the whole premise is that like it's a bunch of people that are all playing video games together um they're <laughs> playing this mmo together and getting to know each other and i loved the extended cast quite a bit and how they portrayed the different characters so yeah, I thought that was good. Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. So I would definitely recommend that there's occasionally times where they do have like the big shoujo energy, just where like they have like a, a really long moment where they're like, <laughs> they'll hold on the characters' faces and it's supposed to be like a beauty shot. It's a thing that a lot of shoujo do. So like if that happens, that's, that's what's happening. <laughs> they're just trying to hold on their faces for a little bit. Um, at this point, it's kind of a stylistic thing with shoujo, so... Oh, but yeah, um, these were the three, like, big standout shows. Um, I know that Vinland Saga is a thing. I haven't watched it yet, though, but I've heard it's really good. I was hoping that I would have time to actually watch it, and then it just everything else piled up way too fast. 
So yeah, anyway, um, <laughs> I need to watch it though. I've heard it's amazing and I've heard season two is really good. In fact, I think season two of Vinland Saga is, um, what do you call it? I think it's by MAPPA too, right? I think it's also a MAPPA property. It wasn't originally MAPPA. I think season one was a different studio, but I think season two is MAPPA, which is exciting. I've been a big fan of MAPPA stuff. <laughs> So anyway, um, my apologies. I know Vinland Saga isn't here, but uh, I do know it's quite good and I do intend on watching it. So yeah, um, that is going to happen. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's actually a really good idea because um, the summer season does seem like it might be a little slower than the spring one. So maybe I can actually watch Vinland Saga. <sighs> That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I should do that. <laughs> I like that idea quite a bit. All right. So that was, uh, what, like over an hour just for, for last season. <laughs> there was a lot, a lot of shows that happened last season. Um, there was a bunch I didn't even talk about that I watched too, but like these were all of like the really big standout things. Um, <laughs> they were, <sighs> it was a lot. It was a lot. You know, Andy, that's actually a good point. You're going to catch up with spring this summer. I think that's good. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Oh, it was a lot. Man, I really, oh, I do need to do a watch along at some point. This month is kind of busy, um, but I would love to do a watch along at some point with y'all. It would be good. <laughs> I think it would be really good. Okay, okay. Let's talk about summer. <laughs> we finally made it through spring. Um, summer, I have a lot of shows that have second seasons or are like continuations of other series. So I'll talk a little bit about like those shows and about the things I'm really excited for. And there are a couple of new properties I'm really excited for as well. So let's hop into it. The first thing that is happening in summer is Jujutsu Kaisen is coming back. It's the season two, um, or it's a technically a prequel, but I'm still going to say it's season two because you kind of need to watch season one <laughs> in order to get the context. Like, I don't think you can start with this um, and go from there. So yeah, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen is coming back. Um, I love Jujutsu Kaisen so much. Um, when it first came out, I was obsessed with it. I am still very obsessed with it. It is very good. It has fascinating character and world building. I am a huge fan of the broadcast. <laughs> and it's one of those shows where I'm constantly afraid that everyone is going to die. <laughs> um, and I mean this as a compliment. Like, I am so attached to these characters and the stakes are so real. Um, that I, <laughs> I'm constantly terrified that they will die. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, um, and yes, uh, for those of you wondering, um, yeah, the movie that came out and season two are both prequels, um, just like different time scales. Um, the movie is a direct prequel to season one, and then season two is like way in the past, um, compared to season one and the movie. Oh, and thank you for the super chat, Andy. Let's go Jujutsu Kaisen. The movie was really good and season one was amazing. I completely agree. I'm going to talk about both of them because they're very, very good. I'm very happy you all enjoy it too. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's quite good. Um, it's one of those shows that I think does qualify as a sign-in, um, specifically because it's got a lot of shonen like, battle aspects, but boy, boy, howdy, this show is dark. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff in this show that, uh, are aged up quite a bit. So yeah, but it's very good. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen is another one of MAPPA's babies. Um, and it shows, um, they love this property a lot. They pour so much love into this. They take a lot of care to give the characters time to breathe. They spend a lot of time giving good characterization to all of the characters. Um, and I absolutely love like the broad cast, like both the um, protagonists and the villains have like very interesting and pretty believable motivations. And yeah, um, I love it a lot. It's very well written. And it also is one of those shows that like gets your blood pumping, like <laughs> when they actually do have the action scenes, like, holy cow. Whew, 
you can feel the the production budget. <laughs> they put a lot of time and effort and money into this. So, no, I unfortunately am not caught up with the manga. Um, I do know there is a lot of things that I need to get caught up with. Um, there has just been a lot of stuff on my plate, um, but I am going to try and get caught up <laughs> because I've heard there's a lot of stuff that goes down. Oh, uh, um, also, um, again, returning to shows like action shows um, that actually have well-written women in them. This is one of them. Um, I really love Maki a lot. She's one of my favorite characters. I love her. <laughs> She's so good. I just, yeah, that really took me by surprise when I was first watching it, because again, I feel like a lot of shonen have this tendency to like write very good, compelling male characters, and then they just kind of like forget that like they need to do the same thing for their female characters. Um, but yeah, no, I, oh, it's so good. It's so good. They do such a good job with the characters. They're like, they're characters. They're, it doesn't matter whether, like, it doesn't matter what their gender is. They're just all really interesting and I love them. <laughs> well, I guess I pick it up again, but just for you. No, please, there's so much anime to watch. You all don't have to. <laughs> You don't have to pick it up for just because I recommend it or because of Maki or because of any of the other the things. There's a lot of shows, but if you have the time and you are interested, Jujutsu Kaisen is great. <laughs> I think it is quite good. Oh, so yeah, I absolutely adored um, the first season. Um, and then they released a movie. They released a movie that was really good, y'all. The movie was really good. <laughs> the movie was amazing. I just, at, at this point, I'm like, Mappa, are you okay? Like, are your animators okay? <laughs> this, it's so much work. The, the animation's incredible, but please tell me you're sleeping. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> Hi, thank you for the super chat. My favorite part was when they jujutsued all over the Kaisen. Agreed. 10 out of 10. Best part. <laughs> Best part for sure. <laughs> oh my word. But yeah, um, the movie's really good. Uh, the movie is a direct prequel to season one. Um, I feel like... I feel like you should probably watch season one first and then you should watch the movie. Um, the movie though is one of those things where you might be able to get away with watching it first and then watching season one. I don't know. It, they do lead pretty well into there. So anyway. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, it's very good. Um, so when they announced that season two was happening, I was extremely excited. Okay, cool. That's that's good to hear. It's It's one of those things where like, yeah, the movie is technically a prequel, but I, I agree. I think you probably should watch season one first. I think everything will just make way more sense if you do that. So yeah, watch season one. And if you like season one, go watch the movie because the movie is really good. <laughs> yeah, I think that is a very fair point because they are assuming that you already have some of the knowledge from season one. They do skip over some stuff. So, okay, okay, it's official. But just watch season one and then watch the movie, even though it's a prequel. Um, same thing for season two. You need to have watched season one. It will not make sense otherwise. Um, they did drop the first episode and it was amazing. It was so good. I don't know. I'm just like living off of this hype right now. <laughs> I'm so excited that this show exists. Um, so yeah, it's adding a ton of context to the broader series. Um, you get to see a lot of characters that are like adults in season one. You get to see them as teenagers, which is really cool. Um, and it's really helpful for seeing like a lot of the stuff that happened before season one and like how these characters grew and became the characters that they are in season one. So yeah, <laughs> it's very good. Um, also, in true MAPPA fashion, the OP was a goddamn banger. So, yeah, um, very good. Very, very good. I thought the ED was also very good, too. The ED for season one was also very good. Um, but yes, uh, they knocked it out of the park. The OP is fantastic. <laughs> it was very, very good. 
So yeah, um, if you've never watched Jujutsu Kaisen and you have the time for it, I would highly recommend checking out season one. See what you think. Um, see if you like it. If you do like it, then go watch the movie and the second season. Um, because at that point, if you like it, I think you'll be fairly obsessed with it. So <laughs> I highly recommend it. It is very good. All right. We have finally made it to the fabled 17 slides. <laughs> I actually had to cut some slides because I felt like this section got so long. <sighs> but anyway, before we jump into fate, um, let me take a drink of water and we'll hop into this. In typical fate fashion, the short version is still quite long. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so originally I was just going to talk about how excited I was for Fate Strange Fake. Um, but then also, yeah, the backing music isn't Eurocamp music. I actually searched um, on this website called Audio Stock um, and I found music that was very similar to Eurocamp music. <laughs> because I love Eurocamp music. Um, but unfortunately I can't use it as a backing track because uh, YouTube would not like that, which makes me sad. But anyway, okay, all right, perfect. I am I am very happy to jump into this because I realized as soon as I started talking about Fate Strange Fake, I was like, oh crap, I have to talk about like, <laughs> I have to talk about like the Fate universe and like the Fate series and like what it is and what Fate Strange Fake is. So anyway, we're here, we're doing it. I'm gonna hop into this. So yeah, um, at this point, I, I have definitely failed <laughs> uh, not giving a lecture. So I'm just gonna commit to it. I'm going to give you a brief history of the Fate series and why Fate Strange Fake is such an exciting new entry to this series for me personally. So yeah, let's, let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so um, a little bit of history. So despite how big the series currently is, it actually started as a visual novel. In particular, it started as a dating sim um, with a lot of like complicated lore behind it, but ultimately it's a dating sim. There are various routes that you can take and various characters who are love interests. So yeah, um, that's how Fate started, is it was a series, <laughs> it was a dating sim visual novel series with a complicated uh, setting, um, to say the least. <laughs> it has now become a absolute behemoth of a series. It has multiple authors for different parts of the series, but the core thing to keep in mind is that every single Fate property focuses on summoning historical figures that will battle for a holy grail. Um, so that's always the premise. Even in the original visual novels, they summoned historical figures. They were battling for a holy grail. In the original visual novels, some of those historical figures were love interests, <laughs> is the short version. So yeah, um, originally a dating sim. Um, the reason why that's relevant is that kind of what I would consider to be like the original Fate series is still that kind of, it's got its uh, roots in a dating sim and you can kind of feel that. So Fate Stay Night um, is like the first big Fate property that was adapted and it follows the Saber love route. Um, then you've got Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works so that follows a different romantic route and then Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel follows a different route. So they're all adapted from the original Fate visual novel that again, it was a dating sim <laughs> that had multiple different routes. The historical figures and battling for a holy grail was still important. Um, but I would argue that Fate Stay Night and like um, all of their iterations, they all focus on character drama and romance um, and they all feature high schoolers because um, that's what the visual novel did. <laughs> Um, the reason why I bring this up is there's a lot of other fate properties that I would argue follow the same genre. So um, they feature high schoolers and 
romance and character drama are really big portions of this. So uh, some notable examples are Fate Grand Order, um, which I think a lot of people will be familiar with. There is technically an anime for that, but most people will know it from the gotcha game. Um, Fate Grand Order like largely features high schoolers, um, a lot of the servants that are summoned, at least in like the anime or like potential love interests. So <laughs> anyway, um, so I would argue that's still kind of that same genre. Um, Fate Extra Last Encore is the same deal. Um, you've got spin-offs from the original Fate Stay Night. So you've got Prisma Ilya and you've got, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Uh, Today's Meal with the Emia family. I always get that one wrong. Um, <laughs> it's like a slice of life um, fate property. Um, but yeah, so the reason why I'm bringing this up is that tonally, I think a lot of these series are fairly similar to each other. Um, so they all feature historical figures, but I would argue a lot of them are more set dressing. Um, it's something where like the mythology behind the heroes that are summoned is important, but I think that the character drama and the romance is the thing that's really important. And for a lot of people, um, they absolutely love that. They love that through Fate Stay Night. They love that through Fate Grand Order and a lot of other series. Sorry, I just like tapped my screen there <laughs> accidentally. Um, but yeah, so a lot of like this portion of the Fate series is very focused on romance, character drama, that sort of thing. Um, they all feature high schoolers prominently and like that's kind of their whole deal. So that's like the Fate Stay Night portion of the franchise. Now, there is a different portion of the franchise that we're really focused on for today. And that is Fate Zero. Fate Zero. Zero is supposed to be a prequel to Fate Stay Night. Here's the thing about it, though. Um, it has a very, very different tone from Fate Stay Night. It is not focused on high schoolers. Um, I think there might be like one or two like younger people that are in it. Um, but Fate Zero is like fully committed to the mythology. It is very concerned with who are these historical figures that have been summoned? What would it be like if they actually interacted with each other? What are their motivations for going after a Holy Grail? What are the motivations of the people involved for going for a Holy Grail? Um, and yeah, it quickly became one of the most popular entries in the series. A lot of people, myself included, started with Fate Zero. Um, and <laughs> it's really good, you all. Um, it's still like one of my favorite anime ever. It's really, really good. They did an excellent job showing off all of the different characters. Everyone is believable. Like the cast, like the people who are actually summoning these historical figures are all really interesting. All of the historical figures are fantastic. Like, oh, it's good. <laughs> No, 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 you didn't. If you started with Unlimited Blade Works, you did not commit a crime. Unlimited Blade Works is very good, um, but it is different, right? Like it's a lot more focused on the character drama as well as like the romance with different characters. And there are historical figures and they are concerned with their mythology to some extent, but dear God, Fate Zero is like another level. Um, I would also say that Fate Zero is like infinitely darker than the rest of the Fate Stay Night series. So yeah, um, <laughs> it's amazing. It's very, very good. They like commit to like, what would it be like if these questionable people from history were summoned into a modern era? And uh, yeah, um, turns out that some of them weren't good people. <laughs> oh, yes, no, it really is that good Rogue Robin. Okay, yeah, so here's the thing. Um, I, yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll get into the, um, consequences of this being one of the best Fate series. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about what differentiates Fate Zero from the rest of like Fate Stay Night. So Fate Stay Night is all written by the original author, Kinoku Nasu. Um, they're like one of the founders of Type Moon. 
um, and they wrote like the original visual novels. Um, they've also written like some of the other side properties. Um, I think they also wrote Garden of Sinners and like Tsukihime. Um, but those are totally different. We're not going to talk about either of those today. <laughs> They're not the most relevant to what we're currently talking about. Um, so yeah, no, he wrote a lot of stuff. Um, so Fate Zero, on the other hand, is written by a completely different person. And I feel like you can really tell. Um, in particular, Gen Urobochi is kind of a legend within the anime community. Um, because he has written the first entries that, like, revolutionized, uh, the industry <laughs> in a couple ways. He wrote the original Madoka Magica, which if you're not familiar with that series, who boy. <laughs> that might be one to check out. Um, Madoka Magica was, like, one of the most subversive series when it came out. It, it portrays a lot of cute... Um, uh, magical girls. Um, and there's a lot of things that happen. <laughs> it becomes very dark very quickly, and it is very good. Um, also, he wrote the original Psychopaths, and I love the original Psychopaths. It is one of my favorite series of all time. Um, we don't talk about seasons two or three. They're written by different people. I watch them and they don't, they don't, they're not the same, all right? They're not the same. They lose the spirit of the original work. They, they don't, they don't grasp the complex political issues that are talked about. Uh, apparently that opinion is also shared by some other people. I know I'm not alone and not, <laughs> not enjoying Psychopath season two or three. So I just pretend they don't exist. Ah, it's just Psychopaths 1. That's the only one that we care about. Um, Psychopaths is really, really, really good. Um, it's actually something that, like, I don't know, I find myself referencing a lot, um, sometimes subconsciously. So, like, if you're interested in dystopian sci-fi future, um, Psychopaths is amazing. It's very good. I actually also really liked the English dub for it. Um, a lot of times I'll prefer Japanese dubs for a lot of shows, um, but I think the English dub for Psycho Pass was quite good. I think they did a really good job with Kogami and uh, Makashima. Their voices were very good <laughs> and they're very important characters. So yeah. <laughs> oh, yep, 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 yep. So yeah, anyway, um, watch watch the original Psycho Pass and then just, you know, you don't have to watch seasons two or three. And they just, we pretend they don't exist here in this household. <laughs> I have heard that um, some of the subsequent Modica Magicas are good. Um, I haven't watched them though. I've only really watched the first one. But yeah, so Gen Urobochi is kind of this dude that like for a period of time rolled in and made like some of the most influential anime. <laughs> and then he just like peaced out. He just like disappeared. He started working on like puppet shows um, and like other media. <laughs> like stop doing a lot of anime stuff um but when he was here he is the one who wrote fate zero and it is incredible um i think that he does a very good job of understanding the mythological figures like the way that they act and the way that they talk and the way that they interact with each other it's a very believable to their characters. It's one of those shows where you kind of feel like you learn more about the historical figures just by watching it. Um, and then it also just does a really good job of like laying out some really um, heavy themes with some of its characters and like the realities that they live in. And it does a very good job of, <laughs> of doing that. Um, so yeah, uh, Fate Zero is fantastic. It is amazing. Um, you don't need to watch Fate Stay Night in order to appreciate it. Um, you can literally just watch Fate Zero and like call it there. <laughs> like I watched it without having watched Fate Stay Night and I really didn't feel like I missed anything. Um, the one thing I will say is because it's a prequel to Fate Stay Night, the very ending of the series, um, they had to make it work with how Fate Stay Night starts. But like, again, I feel like if you want to start with Fate Zero um, and if you love Fate Zero, you can you can do that. Um, a lot of folks, again, love Fate Stay Night, but it is more of like a character romance based thing, whereas Fate Zero is going to be all about mythology, all about like <laughs> dark themes and very well written. Oh, it's very good. It's very, 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 very good. Um, 
Here's the problem though. So I, I did mention briefly that uh, this dude, Gen Urobochi, is known for coming in and then he wrote a bunch of things that were very well received and then he kind of just like moved on. Um, but yeah, uh, that was pretty devastating with Fate Zero because what that meant is that Fate Zero like came into existence and then like, for me personally, no other Fate property ever quite captured that same level of diving into historical figures and like really, really being interested with the mythology behind these different figures. And that was so sad. Like I've, I've watched a lot of Fate Stay Night. I've watched a lot of the rest of the Fate series and I just kept wanting something like Fate Zero again. Um, and we finally have that. <laughs> is the short version of what I'm getting to. Um, after many, many, many years of waiting, we finally have new entries that follow from Fate Zero. Again, you don't have to watch Fate Stay Night in order to appreciate these. If you want to watch Fate Stay Night, you can. Um, but as far as like the tone of Fate Zero, Fate Strange Fake is like it. <laughs> I, I kind of lost it when I watched um, the episode zero, but we're gonna get into that in a second. Um, Lord Elmaloy's case files technically takes place between Fate Zero and Fate Strange Fake. I would say that if you want the extra context for Fate Strange Fake, um, you can go and check out El Malloy. Um, it is very different though. Um, it's a lot like more mellow and it's looking more at like, it's kind of returning to the character based thing again, um, as opposed to like doing a whole bunch of mythologizing, if that makes sense. There's definitely still that there, um, but it's more interested in the political situation of the mages. Um, in fact, I actually haven't finished the whole thing. I need to go back and finish it. But I watched enough that when I watched Fate Strange Fake, I was like, oh, oh, I see. We, we have returned. <laughs> I recognize these characters. So yeah, um, I would say that you probably could jump from Fate Zero to Fate Strange Fake, but you probably do want to watch Lord El Malloy. Um, but I'll get into more of that in just a second. Let's talk a little bit about why Fate Strange Fake has gotten me so excited. So when I watched episode zero for Fate Strange Fake, it was like the magic from Fate Zero had finally returned. Like I, I got really emotional. <laughs> I was really excited. It was so good, y'all. Like all of the historical and mythological fig figures that were featured were so good. Like. Oh my God, they did such a good job of bringing in a bunch of new characters. All of the new cast was really interesting. Um, it's also set in a totally different area, which I thought was great. Um, a lot of the other Fate series has been set in Japan and this is not, which is great. Um, oh my God, it was really, really good. So yeah, I was uh, blown away and I just wanted more. Um, also the OST for it is amazing. Like the final song that plays during the credits is so good, it's so good. I just wanna play it all the time. <laughs> It's amazing. So yeah, I, I watched Fate Strange Fake and I was like, dang, this is amazing. Who wrote this? Because I don't think it's Gen Urobochi. Um, but this is really well written. Like this understands the world and the characters and is really passionate about like trying to accurately portray these different historical figures and mythological figures too. Some of these didn't actually exist in real life. <laughs> But um, yeah, uh, the author of Fate Strange Fake is Ryogo Narita. He has written one of my favorite series of all time, uh, which is Bakano. Um, Bakano is extremely good. Uh, Ryogo Narita is excellent at writing huge ensemble casts. Um, they have compelling motivations. He's really good at balancing comedy with like really dark. <laughs> things. He does not shy away from violence, but he also knows how to temper things quite a bit. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I was blown away to find out that he was the author. Everything made sense all of a sudden because he loves writing stories that are set in the United States. Um, he's got a little bit of an obsession with like the good and the bad parts of uh, American culture, which is pretty close to my heart. 
<laughs> like Bacano is largely set in the United States. Um, and so is Fate Strange Fake. Um, Fate Strange Fake is set in, uh, I think it was a part of Nevada. It's a, like a, a fake part of Nevada um, that doesn't actually exist. Um, but yeah, it's very good. Um, the dude knows quite a bit and is quite passionate about like learning things about the United States and he sets a lot of things there. And yeah, so Fate Strange Fake is set in the United States in, yes, thank you, Snowfield, Nevada. Um, and it's very good. I, well, even though um, right now it's just episode zero, they haven't actually said when the rest of the series is coming out. So maybe if you're watching this and like you want to wait for the full series, you can. Um, you can just see this as like a me expressing that I'm very excited about this. <laughs> um, I would say, though, if you are very interested in like diving into the mythology of characters, um, of how uh, these figures would have actually acted with each other. Um, if you want something that has a much darker tone to it, um, I would say to watch Fate Zero. Um, I would probably suggest watching Lord Elmoloy. I know tonally it's really different from the other two, and it's a lot slower than the other two, but I think it's helpful. Um, just for understanding some of the stuff in Fate Strange Fake. So I'd say Fate Zero, Lord El Malloy, and then Fate Strange Fake is what I would suggest. Um, if you're still interested in like the broader Fate series, God knows you have a lot of options. <laughs> um, if you're interested in like Fate Stay Night, um, I agree with what a lot of you have been saying. I would highly suggest starting with Unlimited Blade Works. I would not recommend checking out the original Fate Stay Night. It's from 2006. Um, they did some really weird adaptation stuff from the visual novel and like, I don't know, some of the characters were really dumbed down. Um, in particular, I'd say that like Saber is like very different um, in the original Fate Stay Night. So I would suggest if you want to check out the rest of Fate Stay Night, watch Unlimited Blade Works. Um, it's one of the ones that came out when like Ufotable was like doing a lot of good work with it. Um, so yeah, you don't need to watch the original Fate Stay Night. In fact, I wouldn't suggest it. I did. I did and I regretted it. <laughs> At the end of it, I was like, why did I watch this? I should have just watched Unlimited Blade Works, but I don't know. I've, I've, uh, I took the plunge so you don't have to. So anyway. <laughs> Oh no, some of you also started it with the 2006 version. Oh god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The nice thing about Fate Stay Night is that because it's different paths, right? Because it's based off of that romance visual novel, um, you technically don't have to like watch them back to back, right? Like you don't have to watch the original Fate Stay Night to enjoy Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Like you can just start Unlimited Blade Works. And I would argue you should do that. <laughs> So anyway, um, but if you are interested in like a much darker tone um, with like really good um, depictions of historical figures, uh, you should watch Fate Zero and then you should check out El Malloy um, because it follows one of the characters from Fate Zero and then you can check out Fate Strange Fake and you'll probably freak out just like I did. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Fate Strange Fake is really good and I really want the rest of the series. But we're probably not going to get it for a little bit. This was kind of just like their really big um, like episode zero to be like, yo, we're working on Fate Strange Fake. Check out our intro episode. And I checked it out and I just want more. I want more so, so badly. Alrighty. So <laughs> hopefully that was helpful. Um, I know that was a lot of me talking about fate. I didn't want to talk too much about the actual story because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like that'll get into really big spoiler territory. So uh, but yeah. Anyway, uh, talking about other summer 2023 anime that I'm pretty excited about. Um, I'm very excited for Helk. I actually haven't read the manga, but I've heard it's very, very good. Um, they're adapting it actually into two core, so it's going to have 24 episodes. Um, the first 12 are going to be this season, and then I think the second 12 will be in the next season. And yeah, no, um, Helk seems like it's going to be really good. It seems like one of those where it's going to be a dark comedy. Um, <laughs> you can see from this promo, um, this is Helk, who I think used to be the hero, um, showing up to talk to the demon lord, being like, let's extinguish the human race. <laughs> 
So yeah, anyway, um, I am very excited for this. Um, I think it's going to be dropping pretty soon. Um, so I haven't watched the first episode yet, but yeah, uh, based on the trailers and like what people have said online about the manga, I'm pretty excited for the anime. So we're going to see how it goes. I'm excited. Uh, the next thing that I am excited about is Horomiya. Um, so this technically came out, oh God, when did the original come out? Like a year or two ago? Maybe it was longer than that. I feel like time is a, a weird um, flat circle. <laughs> I kind of forget when things came out. Um, but anyway, so the original Horomiya um, like went through, I think it was like their senior year. And then there's a bunch of things that they had to cut from the anime. And so this is like what they had to cut. Um, it's called Horomiya, The Missing Pieces. And it's all of like the stories that they weren't able to include in the original. And yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. I really enjoyed Horomiya when it first came out. So I'm looking forward to this. In fact, I actually have to go back and uh, rewatch it because it's been long enough that I, I need to remember who everyone is um, like and how they, they relate to each other. I feel like that's the struggle with watching so much anime is that sometimes like you just have to go back and rewatch certain things, but that's fine. That just means I get to rewatch shows that I like again. Oh, so yeah, anyway, I'm super excited for that. Um, it seems like that's going to be really fun. Oh, I get more of this. I am very excited for it. Um, next, uh, the masterful cat is depressed again today, uh, which is also called Deki Neko. Um, which I think is a very cute abbreviation, <laughs> so I'm going to use it. Oh, thank you for the super chat! God, y'all are very sweet. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's very kind. Yes, no, I am so happy that they're adapting the rest of Horomiya. It's one of those things where, like, I was really happy with the original anime, but, like, getting more of it, oh, that's so good. <laughs> that makes me so, so happy. So yeah, anyway, I am extremely excited for it. I think that they were probably worried that like they had to summarize everything just for the first season. So it's really nice that they can actually go back and adapt stuff that they had to cut from the original manga, or excuse me, they had to cut from the first anime, from the manga. Anyway, Deki Neko. <laughs> so Deki Neko, um, I, when I first saw the premise for this, I, I was very excited for it. Um, the first episode actually came out last night and uh, I can confirm I'm a big fan. <laughs> I really enjoyed this show. Um, the premise is absolutely hysterical. Um, this woman who works a pretty grueling office job ends up picking up a black cat and uh, she takes the cat in and she looks after them. And then the cat um, just sort of like is not a, a cat. <laughs> The cat is like, becomes really, really big and like is essentially her house husband. Like it does all the chores. It cooks food for her. It makes her bentos. It, it makes sure that like she's well fed and she's looked after and like she gets up on time for work. It listens to her um, complain about her job and be like, I don't want to go to work. I just want to stay here with you. And uh, yeah, the first episode was great. <laughs> Like, I really enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, yeah, I was a big fan. So I think this is going to be like a funny and also kind of relatable um, anime. So yeah, <laughs> if you're interested in kind of a wild uh, premise, I would definitely check it out. I was a big fan of it. I thought it was quite good. Um, Interestingly, the studio who's working on this is also producing another anime this season. Um, it's called The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses. And I did watch the first episode of that, but there were some, I'm going to say, interesting art decisions that were made um, in both of them, but I think much more prominently in The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses. Um, they heavily use 3D in a way that can be kind of distracting. I don't know that it necessarily adds to the experience. Like when I watched the first episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, the second season, they also like Mappa used 3D for some of their stuff, but it was like natural. It felt good. I understood why they were doing it and they still had really solid 2D assets that they were using on top of it. Um, whereas I watched the girl I like forgot her glasses. I was really surprised. It was kind of jarring sometimes. Um, <laughs> some of the shots were almost like 
uh, uh, gonna make me have motion sickness. Um, and yeah, it was kind of a shame. Uh, Bear was really excited for the adaptation of this because he's read the entire manga. And when we watched it, we came away and he was like, just go read the manga. <laughs> then you won't have to worry about getting motion sick. <laughs> Um, they also, like, some of the voice directing for it, um, they kind of made the main character a lot more, like, upbeat and ganky, I think, than, like, what he is in the manga. Like, I've also read a little bit of the manga. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. It's kind of a shame because it's a really interesting property, and I do feel like its adaptation suffers a lot because of all of the really, really wild 3D stuff. Also, the main, um, like, love interest, her hair is just constantly, like, it looks like it's staticky. Like, it's always standing up. Like, it's always moving and flowing. I don't know why they decided to do that. The thing is, after having watched the first episodes of both of these, I can tell you that Deki Neko, um, the one with the house husband cat, that one actually looks really good. Like, there's some 3D shots that they actually do a good integration with. There's some questionable shots still, but you know, it actually looks really solid. They did a really good job with the integration of 3D. So I have no idea what happened to the one on the right. Like, <laughs> I don't know if they just wanted to be more experimental with the one on the right, but like, it's pretty distracting. Um, I think that if you're able to get past that, the main story of the one on the right is still very good. Um, but yeah, the 3D animation is very questionable. <laughs> Isaac, we had the same thought. Bear and I last night as we were watching Deki Neko, we're like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> their A team is clearly on Deki Neko and their B team is on the girl I like forgot her glasses. Like, the animation is so much better in Deki Neko. Like, worlds better in Deki Neko. So I have no idea what's going on there. Um, what I will say, though, is it did make me laugh after we watched The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses. It reminded me of another show that I had watched a long, long time ago. Like that very particular motion sickness that I got while watching it. I was like, wait, who's the studio that's responsible for this? It can't possibly be. And then I looked it up and I saw that it was Go Hands. Gohan Studio, um, I should have known. They have a bit of a reputation for what I'm going to say is questionable usage of uh, 3D in their properties. They've gotten a lot better since the property that I had seen. Um, but uh, yeah, for those of you who are familiar with hand shakers, um, they are the studio that made hand shakers. Um, and for me, that told me everything I needed to know. <laughs> because handshakers made me very ill when I watched it. Um, we, <laughs> the first time I watched it was with Bear and Bear's sister. And both Bear, um, so Bear was doing a little bit better, but me and Bear's sister were both just like ill. <laughs> very, very ill after watching it. Like the camera movements and the 3D assets are so unnerving. The way that they move around, it does feel like you're in a VR game and like, that's just no good. <laughs> It's really messed up. So um, clearly they've gotten a little better. Um, the girl I like forgot her glasses. It looks better than hand shakers, but it still has some of that weird properties to it. Um, Deki Neko, I did not have that problem at all. I was totally fine with Deki Neko. So um, anyway. <laughs> Oh god, some of you all have also seen Handshakers. Oh god. Yeah, no, Handshakers is notorious. It's like... <sighs> It's bad. It's really bad looking. Um, it's like one of those properties that like you point to as like, this was a mistake. <laughs> the way that this came together was a problem. It's just everyone who watches it comes away feeling ill or wondering why they used um, 3D the way that they did. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, besides that, um, I've also enjoyed the first episodes from these series. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised by Sunshine in the Mirror. Um, it's like an alternate universe love live sunshine, um, but it's set in a fantasy world. And yeah, it's really good. I would say you don't even need to have watched the original Love Live in order to enjoy it. I think Love Live fans are obviously gonna be like super hype about it, but I actually haven't watched that much Love Live um, and I still enjoyed it quite a bit. The animation is really good. Um, 
because Love Live is an idol anime, like, you still get, like, singing montages that happen in Sunshine. Um, but yeah, it's really cute. I really love the characters. The big doggo is my favorite. <laughs> it's very, very good. Um, I also enjoyed My Tiny Senpai. Um, I suspected that I was going to enjoy this. Although, I do have to say, I think I enjoy the manga still a little bit more. I feel like some of the voice directing for um, the female lead, she's a lot more like... I don't know how to say this. Like, she's pitch shifted really high, I guess. <laughs> like, she speaks in a very high voice. And, like, the way that she talks comes across as, like, a little more babyish, I guess, as a result. Um, which is a shame because, listen, us short people can have low voices too, all right? <laughs> We don't always have to have these high-pitched voices. <gasps> cute senpai shiori. Yeah, here's the thing. It's very cute. Um, and I feel like as a fellow short person, I, I understand her struggles a lot. Um, it's also funny, like, the height difference between her and, like, <laughs> the main character is very similar to the height difference between uh, me and Bear. So I got a kick out of that. I thought that was very funny. <laughs> Oh man, it's definitely a little fan servicey, um, but I still enjoyed it. I thought it was cute. I'll keep watching more of it. Um, and then the last one totally took me off guard. Um, the most heretical la- I've got to find whatever is the, the shortened version of this, but the full name is The Most Heretical Last Boss Queen from Villainous to Savior. So, um... <laughs> It's a very long one. Um, you could probably just call it from villainous to savior. All right, so I have enjoyed some of the, like, this genre of anime has become really popular. Um, I think it's largely based off of a property that came out a couple of years ago, which I absolutely loved. Um, but it's this, the genre is, uh, it's an isekai, but it's people getting transported into Atome games. Um, so, like, the games where you are trying to, like, you have a lot of male love interests and you're trying to figure out which one of them you want to date. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, there's a lot of these shows that exist now. I haven't liked a lot of them. Um, I loved the original, which I am totally blanking on right now. Um, in my head, I just call it villainous. Oh, I guess you can call it Baccarina. Um, Baccarina was like the original one of these in my brain. And Baccarina was good. I think there's a pretty good reason why things broadly like became popular because of it. Um, oh, geez. Sorry, there's a really loud motorcycle coming by. Good God. <laughs> Why was that so loud? I guess it's sunny outside. Well, <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, no, Baccarina is fantastic. It's really cute. Um, I really enjoyed it quite a bit. And a lot of like Atome game isekai have come out after Baccarina. Um, this is the first one that I've actually enjoyed. Um, a lot of the other ones I feel like kind of leaned a little bit too much into like, <laughs> <laughs> the Atome game aspect of this, whereas this one has just been like, I don't know, they've committed to this one being dark. Um, like this character who she ends up being isekai'd as is like a really, really bad person in the original Atome game. And like she keeps having nightmares where like she remembers like what this character did to all the other people. And it's like really horrific things. And it's just her trying to like correct all of the awful things that like would have happened and i don't know i enjoyed it i'm not sure if it's gonna hold up but the first episode was all right so <laughs> maybe i'll come back to this at the end of the season and be like oh man that was that was trash that was no good but yeah no um anyway a tome game uh isekai that i actually enjoyed we're gonna see how it how it turns out but if you are interested in an Atome game isekai i would suggest watching uh Bacarina. it was quite good <laughs> Oh, and with that, we've done it. We've made it. There's a lot of other stuff coming out in summer. Um, but honestly, I'm kind of just waiting to see like 
what happens, like what it is that I'm going to think from different shows. These are the shows that I'm currently excited about, but I'm sure that by the end of the season, I'll be like, there was this show that I didn't talk about and I'm so excited for it. And like, <laughs> these are all the things that happened with it. So yeah, anyway, we've done it. We made it through. What time is it? Two hours. We did that in two hours. Oh my God. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all for listening to your ramble. Um, this, just to let you know, was almost 100 slides, so I'm proud of us. We got through, I think it was like 93 slides. Oh God, it was a lot. <laughs> it was a whole lot. But anyway, I figure what we can do for the last little bit is actually have like a proper Zatsudan. Just hang out, chat for a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, um, <laughs> we'll just kind of go from there. I'm really glad that you all, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that this was helpful for seeing different things. Oh, I appreciate the recommendation, Andy. My happy marriage. I will check that out. Thank you. Oh, actually, I was looking forward to that one. I didn't put that in the slides. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm very excited. Ugh, this is going to be great. Let me um, hop us over to the chatting screen really quick. Alrighty. Also, I apologize. There might have been a, a black flash on screen because I was really paranoid about um, all of the weird technical issues. I ended up updating OBS and stream elements, which might have been a mistake because <laughs> now I get this weird black flash whenever I transition scenes. I'm going to have to figure out what's going on there. Oh, Chibinoko, you were slightly too dark. Give me a second. Let's turn that off. There we go. I had a different lighting on Chibinoko there. And then let me, I think I have my little cute outfit. Give me a second. Ooh. Is this it? This does not seem like it's it. <laughs> Maybe I can't turn it on. No. Uh, I can't figure out where it is. Which one of these is it? Hmm. There we go. Got it. You can tell that I, I don't practice a lot with a... Uh... <laughs> I need to figure out which of these toggles is which. Oh gosh. But yeah, um, I hope that y'all are doing well. This was really nice. I have a lot of thoughts clearly about all of the different anime that I was really excited about. Um, there's a whole bunch that I wasn't even able to talk about that I ended up watching too. But yeah, I hope that's helpful for seeing like which things um, I personally thought were really good from last season. Um, if you end up blowing through all of those and you want more, like uh, a site that I really like using is called Live Chart. Um, you can go and search by season and you can see what all is coming out in different times, which I think is really good. <laughs> yeah, no, I did manifest the blankie. It's, it's pretty good. It's a good ability. It took me a couple of tries. I had to go through some other expressions first, but... <laughs> But yeah, um, there's also uh, my anime list is a place that does a lot of rankings of different shows, but you can also check out like seasonal stuff there. But yeah, there was a lot of really good stuff that came out in the spring. It was nice. <laughs> it was very good. Um, I guess like broadly on a Zatsudan talk, um, I've been doing a lot of work recently, uh, like behind the scenes, I've been working on the next lore archive which I'm pretty excited about. I think it's going to be really good. I've been putting together all of the stuff. I've been writing the script for that. So yeah, um, as far as like my schedule for July, I actually, so I'd been waiting because I wanted to see when volume F would actually drop. And I think based on what they've currently revealed, I think I can probably release my final schedule. So I will probably do that after the stream. Um, it might not be today, but it might be tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I've got uh, some fun stuff coming up, um, not just for like Blue Archive, but I've got a game that I'm excited to play with you all. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's going to be really good. So yeah, I think uh, it's going to be within the next couple days, I'll actually have a schedule for July out. So, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh 
no, Maki, Mal destroyed anime for you when an anime I liked got a five point. My day is ruined. Here's the thing. That is the rough thing about Mal. Um, so my anime list can be a blessing and a curse where it is a really nice aggregator just to get a general idea of what people think about different series. But it's really sad when like a show that you really like gets bad reviews and you're like, why? Why did no one like it? I don't understand. But it's always nice because like it's a review site and not everyone leaves reviews. Like God knows at some point I need to sit down and actually add reviews to that. But it's a lot of work. <laughs> like I feel like I would want to spend a lot of time and care thinking about what I'm writing first. Um, and then I would post a review and like there's hundreds of shows that I've watched and like that would just take a really long time. But at some point, at some point I should do that. I also have like this gigantic, I don't know, at some point maybe I'll, I'll show you all this huge um, anime list that I just have going. I have it on my Google Drive and on my uh, phone. <laughs> It's just a list of all of my favorite anime and I've got it broken into categories and um, I've got like <laughs> a bunch of different sections, but there's so much anime that's on it. It's kind of dumb. I need to, I need to at some point like do something with that list. Either write reviews for everything or go from there. Oh, Andy, that's actually a good question. Any duds from spring 2023? Okay, so a show I didn't talk about that I was actually really excited about at the beginning of the season was Heavenly Delusion. I don't know if I would call it a full dud, um, but I was kind of disappointed with where the series went. Um, it had like a really interesting premise, but I think it's one of those shows that is really focused on the mystery. Um, and I think that the core mystery was quite good, but I do feel like the general tone was a little all over the place. <laughs> which made me kind of sad because I was really into it. Like the OP was good. I thought that like it was a really interesting, great look at cosmic horror. Um, and yeah, no, uh, I think that like by the end of the season, I was kind of falling off of Heavenly Delusion pretty hard, which was really sad because I'd been really into it up to that point. In particular, I think that like they start focusing on like I don't know, it, it was maybe like an artistic direction that the original author took, but like it was almost like they just wanted to make their characters suffer just for the sake of suffering. Like suffering is character development for like no other reason. And that really bummed me out. So um, yeah, I'd say that if you're interested in Heavenly Delusion, it does still have some really good horror. Um, and it was still quite interesting. Like the mystery itself I thought was quite good. Um, but I would just say, like, proceed with caution. There's some stuff that happens, like, much later in the series that, like, ugh, <laughs> was kind of distasteful, I think. Um, and that was kind of a bummer. So um, I'd say if you're okay with, like, dark themes and uh, that sort of thing, and I mean, like, dark themes, um, then I think that would be... I think it's worth a, a check out, but uh, it didn't make my ultimate list, um, which was sad because I, I had really high hopes for it. But I do think that the plot kind of jumped all over the place. They also had a couple of episodes that had like very different episode directors and the animation was all over the place. Like sometimes it was really good and sometimes like there was really bizarre decisions made and like the tone would jump between like really happy go lucky and like absolutely devastating and <laughs> it was like I got a lot of whiplash from watching that so yeah no that was that was a bummer um what else did I think were kind of duds that's a great question I'm actually really happy you mentioned that because that was something I wanted to talk about but I wasn't sure how long it would take me to get through those slides so <laughs> oh gosh oh you know uh that is actually a really good shout out I am also really excited for the new Spice and Wolf in 2024 I'm if I'm being totally honest, I really liked the original. Um, I'm guessing that they just wanted to adapt like more from the original uh, light novel, because um, I'm sure there was a lot of stuff that they had to cut. Um, but I loved the original Spice and Wolf. So like if it's anything like the original, I'm pretty excited for it. Like <laughs> I'm excited for when that will happen in 2024. I think that will be good. Oh, um, also other things I'm excited for in 2024 is Delicious in Dungeon. You'll hear me talk about that when I do um, the next version of this stream. Oh, actually, no, you won't. It'll be 
like two after this because i think that'll be winter 2024 um but yeah delicious in dungeon is one of my favorite uh manga and it's getting an anime and i'm super excited <laughs> it's gonna be good oh but yeah let me i'm gonna pull up live chart really quick give me one second Ugh, live chart let's look at stuff from last season what were other things that i thought were duds that i was sad about because I'm pretty sure there were other things I was sad about. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um. <laughs> oh, another one. I'm not sure if I would call it a dud. It's more like I didn't talk about it because I think it's one of those shows where if you're already a fan of the series, you're, you're probably watching it already. Um, so Konosuba, it got like a side story that was adapted last season. So um, it was Konosuba, Explosion on This Beautiful World. And yeah, um, it's one of those where I think that if you're already really into the series, you would enjoy, but it's not like a good jumping on point for the series. <laughs> it's very referential to the rest of it. And actually, I found that um, as far as like new material, I was really excited with all of the stuff that happened with the Crimson Demons, like when they were actually in their camp. But after that, I don't know, I felt like it didn't add too much to the overall plot. Um, so I'd say that like if you're a fan of Konosuba um, and you want to know more about Megumin and you want to know more about um, like Chomosuke and <laughs> some of the other characters related to the Crimson Demons, I'd say probably watch like the first like five episodes or so. Um, but like the rest of the series, I would say it doesn't add too much to the rest of it. So yeah, I don't know that like, um, it's not something where like, I think I actually dropped off at like episode 10 or something. So I was like, oh, this, this feels like it's just kind of like rehashing season one, but like from Megamine's perspective. Um, and I just wanted to watch season one. <laughs> I just wanted to go back and rewatch that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that it's definitely like helpful extra material, but it's like totally not necessary to watch. Like you can still watch the rest of the series and it's fun. Maybe I'll be wrong about that when season three comes out. Maybe season three will reference some of these characters, but like, I don't know. I think that like the first little bit is definitely like fun extra stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, Isaac, do you think the isekai is being overused by authors as a tool to explain their anime setting to the audience? I actually, um, my opinions on isekai generally is that it's a genre that is very focused on wish fulfillment. Um, I think it's being used as a tool to... <laughs> Uh, get people out of bad situations that the author can't think of a better situation for, um, or a, a better solution for. And I think that's a shame because I feel like some isekai where they're like, oh, this person, like a really common isekai trope is that someone is being worked to death and then they, they pass away from like overwork or they're hit by a truck and then they're transported to a new life where they can finally relax and enjoy themselves and get to feel like they're not just a cog in the machine and i don't know that that sort of isekai makes me really sad because like <laughs> i don't know like i feel like maybe we could talk about like better working conditions for people and not just like running people into the ground for the sake of profits like maybe maybe there should be a different solution other than that there was this um anime that came out i think it was a couple of seasons ago um where it was this woman who was working this horrible job like absolutely horrible job and she ends up taking on um, these little spirits uh, and the spirits end up living with her and they like brighten her mood and brighten her spirit and they're like something for her to look forward to. <laughs> Every episode that I watched of that anime, I was just so bummed out the entire time. Like, <laughs> it made me so sad. Like this poor woman is being worked to death, but the thing that makes her happy is the thought that like, oh, maybe I'll get a day off and I can spend with the little ones, the little spirits back at home. And you're like, dear God, that's depressing. <laughs> oh my God. 
Yes, Andy, thank you, Shachiku. Oh my God, it was insanely cute. And I was also just devastated every single episode. I'm like, this woman, oh my God, her boss is terrible. <laughs> like this workplace is so bad. We need to get her better conditions so that she doesn't have to work here. <sighs> so anyway, um, that's kind of my biggest gripe that I have with Isekai is I feel like it tends to be wish fulfillment, but in like a sad way. <laughs> Where it's like people are, nowadays are getting, it's like overworked salary people are getting isekai'd. Whereas originally isekai was like high schoolers who were like, I don't know, who were like bullied um, and they get transported to another world and then suddenly they're really popular and they have a bunch of friends. Um, but yeah, it's like, I don't know, that's something that bums me out about a lot of isekai is it does just kind of feel like sad wish fulfillment where it's like people who just want to have better uh, work-life balance, who don't want to have to be working themselves to death, who don't want to be screamed at by their bosses, who don't want to like have to go in and work grueling hours. Oh, it makes me sad. <laughs> um, I think that's probably why like some of the subversive uh, isekai is my favorite, like Konosuba and ReZero, where like they kind of use isekai as a vessel um, and like Konosuba is like really poking fun at the whole wish fulfillment thing where like <laughs> the main character is just like <laughs> universally looked down upon and like yes he has like people he works with but he's not like this all-powerful being with like superpowers like <laughs> he's a dude who has like a couple of skills that are okay. Um, and then, uh, ReZero, kind of its whole deal is, like, um, Isekai is more like, a just like a, a setting thing, um, and then from there, it's kind of like the main character comes in thinking that he's gonna be all-powerful, and, like, the show is about him getting taken down a notch, and, like, having to accept the reality of his situation, um, and it's very good. I like ReZero quite a bit. Um, yes, no, Konosuba is funny, ReZero is pain. <laughs> yes, no, them calling him Kazu Trash. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, but yeah, a lot of, yes, you all are absolutely correct. A lot of isekai is like big escapism. And God knows when I was working a rough job, like, <laughs> let me tell you, there was definitely some isekai that I would read of like people who are in grueling positions going and relaxing in another world that is kind of cathartic. It's kind of hard to explain, but like when you are in that position, like it can be nice to have some of the escapism, but it's also sad. <laughs> it's also deeply sad. Um, and ultimately I'm glad that like I went and found a different job instead of just working a grueling job. I used to work in um, that particular job I'm thinking of was I was working in a call center um, and like, oh my God, call centers are rough. <laughs> Call centers are rough, y'all. Um, it's it's a very grueling thing. Thankfully, I didn't have to do a bunch of overtime, but like it was exhausting work. Um, and before that, I worked in a research lab that did require overtime and I was dying. <laughs> it was too much. It was like an absurd amount of hours every week and I had to work on the weekends and like there was just a lot of issues with like the power structures of academic research um, where they, they kind of treat like the people on the bottom like crap. You're not paid very well. Um, I've heard some of... <gasps> what? What? These motorcycles, man! <laughs> Bikes, where are they coming from? They know, they know I'm streaming. Oh God. <laughs> oh God, some of y'all worked in call centers too. Yeah, no, it's rough. I'm very, very happy I'm not doing that anymore. Um, it was like the period of my life where like the phone would ring and you're just like, oh God. Oh no, I have to talk to someone and they're probably gonna be mad. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to fix their issues and like, oh, that was actually funny. I ended up um, becoming like one of the leads um, in that call center. So I was like, not like a full supervisor, but kind of like the halfway point between a supervisor and like a regular call center person. Um, so whenever people would call in and they would be angry and they would ask for a supervisor, I was one of the people who they, they got to talk to. Um, 
Boy, boy, howdy, y'all. Um, I'm glad that you all think that my voice is relaxing because I had to use it, um, like, I had to weaponize it in order to talk with people. <laughs> like these angry people, I would always have to calm down. Um, and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't work. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, and here's the thing. A lot of times their anger was very justified. And that's another hard thing is when someone calls in and like, they're totally right to be angry because the system isn't working. And you're like, I'm sorry, I will try to get this resolved for you. Here's the amount of time. Here's my uh, work contact info. You can send me like information here. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, no, Yumi Kumpf bombing the Angie customers for real though. That was just my thing. A lot of times, too, like if um, like I could tell that certain people were like having someone be angry at them and whatever, I'm like, hey, just like send them over to me. I'll talk to them and try to get them to calm down. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, for real. Sometimes they do just get more angry and you're like, oh, God. A lot of people, though, once because here's the thing, I did technically have like extra permissions um, that like regular call center people didn't have. So like. Oh God, the structure of a call center is no good, y'all. <laughs> you like have way too many systems that you're in charge of and you are like thrown to the wolves when it comes to dealing with angry people and like, oh God, it's a lot. <laughs> oh no, Andy can highly relate to facing directly with customers. God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's a rough gig. Um, thankfully, the job did pay well. Um, so I was able to like finally buy a car, which was important for commuting. <laughs> uh, prior to that, we were just relying on Bear's car, um, which was rough because like he had stuff he had to do too. So we'd get up super early and he'd have to drive me down and then he'd go and do his stuff and then he'd have to come and pick me up. So um, anyway, I'm happy I was finally able to get my own car. Um, let me tell you, driving as a snake is, uh, <laughs> an endeavor. <laughs> it is not a thing I enjoy doing. I do not like driving. Um, especially the place where I live, the weather gets really, really bad. Like, oh, the winter is just about six months long. Like, <laughs> it lasts from November to April. That's just winter where I live. Um, and then we have spring for like a couple weeks in April and May, and then it becomes summer. And then summer lasts from like May, June until like August. And then September and October are the best times of the year. Um, it is like the perfect temperature outside. I can walk outside with a sweater and no one will look at me weird, um, <laughs> which is wonderful. So I just roll on out. Um, yeah, the temperature is great. Um, the area where I live, all of the trees change color and it's beautiful. It looks so good. They have orange and red and yellow and it's just everywhere and it looks so nice. It's kind of a pain to clean up the leaves afterwards, but like... <laughs> Oh God, yeah, no. Um, but anyway, so six months of winter um, means that you have to drive in six months of winter. And like, wow, that sucks a lot. They do an okay job of clearing the roads. Um, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you have to go and do some of it yourself. And that's super fun. Uh, just shoveling out a bunch of snow and there's ice everywhere. Plus the car that I had, um, it's kind of expensive to buy cars that have four wheel drive or like all wheel drive, which is what Bear has. Bear has a car that actually has four wheel drive. So I always feel like pretty safe in his car. Like obviously like you still have to drive slowly and be very careful, um, especially of other drivers. Um, but I feel a lot more secure in his car in snow. Um, it generally has better traction on stuff. Um, but my car that I had, um, it had front wheel drive. So the motor would only power the front wheels. Um, that if you have like the option between front and rear wheel drive, which is where only the back wheels have the motor attached to it. Um, you should always pick a front wheel drive car if you, um, have to, to pick between them. Um, specifically for driving in snow because, uh, rear wheel drive cars just cannot deal with the snow. <laughs> They can't do it like they they have a really, really hard time dealing with like the weird traction and actually getting the car to move forward. 
Um, whereas front wheel, at least you'll like go in the general direction that you want to be going, <laughs> which is good. But yeah, I used to have to commute uh, with a front wheel drive car in like um, very questionable conditions because my work uh, would often make us still come in. Even when there was like a snow emergency, there was actually a couple of times where I just like refused to come into work. Um, I was just like, nope, my car won't start. Sorry, I'm not coming in. <laughs> I'll just like take an occurrence for this. Like I'll, <laughs> I'll deal with this. Um, but yeah, I think there was one time they wanted us to come into work when it was, oh, let me do some calculations because I know a bunch of you are in Celsius. Give me a second. Fahrenheit to Celsius. Um, let's go. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Oh, really? Wait, are they the same? Oh. Apparently the negative numbers are really similar. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, there was one day where it was uh, negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is, God, what is that in Celsius? Uh, no, negative 30. Uh, that's negative 34 degrees Celsius. Um, and yeah, negative 34 degrees Celsius, negative 30 Fahrenheit. Um, and with the wind chill, it was like negative 60, um, <laughs> which means you'll get frostbite in like five minutes, like less than five minutes of being outside. So, um, yeah, I was like, nope, I'm not coming into work. I'm sorry. I'm not going to die, actually. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Thank you. So, um, yeah, and actually I was having trouble getting my car to even start. Um, the battery just did not like how cold it was. So I was able to get it to start, but I'm like, nope, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not dealing with like, if I get stuck in like snow somewhere or whatever, like I will freeze to death. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here. Thank you. Oh God. So yeah, um, it can get that cold where I live. So we, we get we get the whole spectrum. Um, I feel like I, I get like the most extreme weather here. Like the winter, we get a ton of snow and it gets really cold. And then the uh, summer, it gets really hot and humid. Um, it's not quite as hot as like, um, if you go down further south, like it gets a lot hotter there, but yeah, no. I don't like the humidity. The humidity is no good. <laughs> it gets really, really warm with extra humidity. I actually, I grew up um, in the underground where I grew up. Um, it was more out west and it was technically a desert there. So uh, the summer would be a dry heat. So it would get really hot, but like you didn't have the extra humidity on top of that. So that was at least good. <laughs> The extra humidity is terrible. It feels like you never cool down. Like I know some of y'all live in places where it's just like constantly really hot and humid and I'm so sorry. It's so rough. <laughs> Extreme weather snake survival snack versus wild. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, no kidding. I just kind of have to like bundle up and just be inside all the time. <laughs> during the winter and then the summer is um definitely pretty all right it's 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 not quite as bad but um the humidity can still be very annoying but yeah no dry heat is definitely the best type of heat um because at least like if you're sweating like you're actually cooling down as opposed to humidity which is like <laughs> you're just sweating and nothing is happening <laughs> just really hot like um i used to have to work in um i did some when i was uh, doing my research work um working in a lab way back way back in the old days um some of the work that we had to do was outside and i would have to like bring like i would wet a towel and i would put that on my neck just as like some way to try and get cool it didn't always work but like oh god <laughs> oh yeah no um i i'm sorry for those of you in australia i i have heard the legends i've heard the tales that it is uh very very hot there <laughs> my deepest apologies i was gonna say though it's winter there right now isn't it although i don't know if y'all are still having um i guess like in your summer which is uh winter where i'm at um 
You also have to deal with a lot of fires. I feel like fires are a really big problem in a lot of the world, which is no good. <laughs> Not a fan. Not a big fan of the fires, though. Um, there's a really big series of fires that are raging just north of where I'm at. Um, I'm not in any danger whatsoever, but the smoke keeps blowing down to where I live. And they keep issuing warnings telling people that we can't go outside. <laughs> or being like, if you do have to go outside, like, please wear, like, masks or, like, protective material because it's not, like, healthy for you to be breathing the air. Oh God, yeah, no. Yeah, and then uh, California is also having a lot of wildfires, which is no good. The NO, oh no, Toru, you're in Canada. Oh God, my deepest condolences. Is it really smoky for you all too? Because all the smoke keeps blowing down into the United States and it's, <laughs> I it makes me very worried for you all up there because like, dear God, this smoke is really thick. Um, it's actually much better today um, than it has been in the last week or so, but like, good God, it'll just periodically like, we'll get a bunch of smoke that comes down and then <laughs> we'll get some torrential rainfall and it moves out. <sighs> I, I hope that y'all are doing well up there. Oh, thanks for stopping by, Andy. I know it's super late where you're at. Thank you so much for coming by. And oh, y'all are very sweet with the memberships and the super chats and sticking around. I appreciate it. I hope you have a good night. Oh, yeah. So um, with the like the bad smoke air, you can definitely still make it into work. Um, when Bear and I, we had to go do some errands the other day when the air was really bad, where like you could barely see like buildings um, that were far away, which wasn't very good. Um, but yeah, we, we just brought some masks with us. Um, but sitting in the car, we had the masks off and like, oh God, you could like taste it. You could taste the smoke because the car is just, um, it's just like circulating the air from outside, right? So like, it's just circulating the smoky air. Like we should have turned off the air conditioning. I think that would have helped. But yeah, no, it's it's no good. Um, so yeah, I think that folks could still get into work, but like, ugh, you probably have to turn off your air conditioning or something, because otherwise you're just circulating the smoky air right inside your car. Oh, okay. I'm glad to hear that, Toru. You're in Vancouver, so yeah, because I was going to say, I think that a lot of the fires are, they're closer to like Ontario and um, places like that, right? I think that that's the deal, is they're like raging up there like Quebec and Ontario. I think there's a lot of fires that are happening right now, so. Ugh. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. I thought it was Quebec, okay. Ew. that's no good. <laughs> that's no good, y'all. We're, we're, we're still in July, um, and we already have a lot of fires that are burning all over the place. Now, I feel like this time of year ends up being really rough for like a lot of the world because you're gonna have like a bunch of typhoons and hurricanes that start moving in in like coastal areas you've got fires that start going in like drier parts of different countries Ugh. there's also been a lot of really bad heat waves like we had a really terrible heat wave the last month um i think it was one of the driest junes that my area had ever seen which was kind of insane um, we ended up getting a bunch of torrential rainfall <laughs> on July 3rd and July 4th. Um, and I'll tell you that the, the plants outside are very happy for that. But yeah, uh, we got hardly any rain at all. I think that within a half an hour on July 3rd, we got more rain than we had received all of June. So <laughs> it was a lot of rain very quickly. Ooh, oh yeah, the tropical storms are coming. So much fun. Yeah. You know, it's kind of wild too, because like even for folks who don't live on the coast, like especially like really big tropical storms, hurricanes and typhoons, once they smash into the land, like they become like really big thunderstorms that just kind of roll across the entire country. <laughs> At least that's how it is where I live. Like we'll have hurricanes that come and they'll hit like Florida and then like zzz, they just zoom up the rest of the country <laughs> and they just like cause all sorts of damage. It's terrible. Oh God. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If you're in Puerto Rico too, like dear God. 
Oh my word. Yeah, it's the heat has been really, really bad in a lot of uh, the world. I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan of that whatsoever. Ugh. But yeah, no. <laughs> Sky. All those fireworks popped open the clouds. God, it's true. God. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like a bit of a Grinch with July 4th stuff um, because like I always just get really annoyed at everyone setting off fireworks, but I think it's probably because like, <laughs> I don't know, I just feel really bad for all of the animals that like have to, to listen to it because it's kind of constant. Like people go kind of nuts with fireworks where I'm at. Um, and here's the thing, if it was just July 4th, I think it would be better, but people like set off fireworks for like a week ahead of time and then they'll do it like a week after too. It's like two weeks of fireworks. Like literally last night, it was like July 7th and people were setting off fireworks. Like what the hell? I don't understand why they still have any left. <sighs> I don't know, I guess it's the American way, but I am, <laughs> I'm not on board with it, man. It's too much. It's too loud. It's too loud and it'll be at like one in the morning and I'm just like angrily looking out the window at my na my, my uh, next door neighbor and I'm like, why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> it's so late. Why couldn't you do this earlier? Why is it one in the morning and you're doing this? <sighs> but yeah, anyway, do you know they actually have to have like, um, like people put out PSAs and things of like special equipment that you can get for your animals if they're terrified of the, the fireworks. Um, you can get like weighted blankets or weighted jackets and things, um, which is very good. But uh, yeah, it's no good, man. Some people just like take their animals, like they just like go on a vacation away from the big cities. <laughs> Whenever July 4th happens, they'll just like go into the wilderness with their animals and just like hang out for a bit. Uh oh, I knew some people who did that growing up that had very, very sad, neurotic dogs that like just could not deal with the fireworks. So they were like, all right, July 4th is coming up. We're packing up. <laughs> we'll see you all in a week. We'll be back then with the dogs. And you're like, okay, good luck. <laughs> oh God. Oh God, Toru, you went to the beach for the 4th and the people at the beach houses were very angry at the folks launching fireworks on the beach. Someone was shining a laser at people. Oh God. Here's the thing, there's also a lot of drinking that happens. <laughs> so people make even more questionable decisions. I, I showed up to my day job. Um, so I, I rolled into work on, on Wednesday after um, all the festivities had happened. And the first thing that my boss says during our meeting is she's like, hey, everyone, hope y'all are doing well. Hope that you had a good July 4th. Um, hope that you didn't blow off any pieces of your hand that you <laughs> all of your fingers are still there. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so morbid. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, that is kind of a problem. Um, people don't always use fireworks safely. So, yeah. Oh, I'm so glad, Blue, that your cat was snoozing through it all. That's good. I feel like that is the optimal solution. If your your animal just doesn't care, your pet is like, nope, it's fine. <laughs> Who cares about these fireworks? I'm going to sleep. Oh, God. Yeah, no, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> but it's over now. Um, uh, theoretically, there won't be more fireworks for a little bit. So I guess that's good. We're gonna move into the summer. It'll be pretty warm for a little bit. Um, I keep checking, cause this time of year, we always get a lot of torrential rainfall, but ever since July 3rd and the 4th, we haven't really had any rain. So I don't know, it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. Oh man, I am actually really excited that the Valentine's event is coming back around again in Blue Archive. I'm really surprised that Wakamo isn't getting a rerun though. I'm curious if that means that like the hyper limited characters are just like, you have like the one chance to get them and then like you can theoretically get them on other hyper limited banners. I feel like there's no way that that's the case, but yeah, no, uh, the Valentine's event is happening and Wakamo isn't getting rerun. Technically you can pick up Wakamo off the Mika banner. Um, so that's good at least. I just, I'm, I'm surprised by it. 
<laughs> I'm very surprised that she doesn't have a rerun, but yeah, no, I'm very excited. The Valentine's event was really fun the first time. You can actually get like individual chocolate from the different students and they're all really cute. Like they all have like different homemade variations. I want to collect all of them. Like there was a bunch that I wasn't able to get the first time, but yeah, no. <laughs> I'm very excited. I think it's going to be great. Oh, but yeah, um, after the Valentine's event, so we've got Mine is happening the next patch. And then after that, um, I think Mika should be after, right? So we'll have like the Mine patch for the next two weeks. And then I think Mika will happen. And then I think volume F is dropping then. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to have to wait to see, but yeah, no, I, uh, <laughs> I am curious, but yeah, no, um, it's really nice. So, uh, the blue archive, like kind of the way that it works is there are two servers. Um, there's a global server, which is the one that I tend to focus on. Um, it's the one that's translated into English and several other languages. And then there's the Japanese server and they're technically like six or seven months ahead of us. So it's wonderful because if you want to look ahead to like future patches and stuff, you can just look at the the uh, Japanese server and uh, it makes it very easy to plan for characters, <laughs> which is very nice. So yeah, based on the Japanese release schedule, we should get Mika, um, not this patch, but the patch afterwards. So, oh man. Oh, you know, that's true we won't get a Mika Valentine story since she's released after the Valentine event. Ah, that's sad. That's very sad. <laughs> that's actually tragic. Oh, man. Yeah, no, um, it's a really nice system. I do really like that we can see ahead of time <laughs> what stuff is going to be. I think the main drawback of the Japanese server is just that, like, obviously they're further ahead in the story, and that can be an issue when it comes to story spoilers, um, because some people will just drop big story spoilers, and you're like, oh no, that's not, that's not on the, that's not, that's not on the global server yet. <laughs> Yeah, so it is, uh, Mine is the banner for the Wakamo event. So there's no Wakamo banner, so it's Mine. Um, and like the Valentine's event is happening like concurrently with that. And then afterwards we'll get Mika. So yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm glad that the Christmas in June and July was also fun. I enjoyed that quite a bit. It was a nice little, <laughs> it was a nice event to have. I think it's great. <laughs> Oh, I'm really excited though. There's a bunch of games I'm excited to play with you all too. Um, we've been doing a lot of gacha games for the last like month or so, but I've got some other um, games that I picked up off of Steam that I'm super excited to play with folks. So, oh, oh yeah. Um, so Mine, um, she showed up in the Christmas event. Um, she is the, uh, she has blue hair and the big wings. Um, she's the head of the remedial knights. So she's got this gigantic shield and she's like <laughs> the first to run into action. Um, she's actually a tank, which is great. So I feel like that's like perfect. Yeah. So I, I think Kana, um, I think that she might be coming after the Valentine's event. I think that's the deal. I think it's Mika has like her hyper limited four day banner. And then you've got uh, Kana and you've got Megu, I think, are the banner that's after that. I think, I think that's how that's gonna work. <laughs> We're gonna have to see. Oh, you know, she is also very cute. I'm also very excited for Megu. Oh, there's so many good characters, you all. There's so much good stuff that's coming. I'm so excited. Oh, it's gonna be good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy that some of you all have been able to. I think that's the thing. I think that like if you make a concerted effort, you can avoid being spoiled by a lot of stuff. I also try really, really hard on this channel and in the Discord and everything. Um, I try really, really hard to make it so that um, spoilers are not visible. Um, because I think it's pretty important not to do that. Not always successful, unfortunately. Um, I do know some folks have been spoiled, um, which uh, bums me out, but I'm trying my best to, to at least here make it so that spoilers don't come through. And we're gonna see how that volume F stream goes. I feel like I'm gonna be running double time with like double checking chat, making sure people aren't dumping spoilers. <laughs> 
Ugh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a thing um, but I feel like I'll be pretty comfortable just timing people out or um, kicking people <laughs> if they're trying to dump a bunch of spoilers so Ugh, I think it should be fine I think it should be fine <laughs> oh gosh but yeah anyway I think it's gonna be good I'm looking forward to it I think it's gonna be fun to hang out with you all and play a bunch of stuff but yeah um oh yes Gehenna is very good <laughs> It is wonderful. Oh man, it's it's a lot of really exciting stuff that's coming up, y'all. I am very much looking forward to uh, yeah, getting to play through the story with you all. Um, I'm excited for when I'll have lore archive ready. Um, yeah, I think that my plan right now is I'm trying to finish up lore archive first. That's kind of my top priority. And then I'm going to finish up the second part of the student reviews. My original plan was I was going to just do the student reviews back to back. Um, but then I was looking at like volume F impending. Um, and I was like, oh, no, I got to finish Lore Archive Millennium. This is really important. I have to finish this before then. So, yeah, anyway, we're, we're working on uh, finishing the Lore Archive thing. And then I'll be finishing up that student review thing. So, yeah, it should be good. I'll even have some new characters to add to that one at that point. Oh! That's extremely sweet. And from JR, I want to say thank you for your videos. Very recently got into Blue Archive again after I stopped playing for a few months. So I don't have many students, but I have everything saved for Mika. That is wonderful. I think that's an excellent plan because here's the thing. So um, those hyper limited banners, I think, are just like the best bang for your buck because all of the three star students get a massive rate increase. Um, instead of it being 3%, it's a 6% chance of getting a three star student. So it's a great chance to fill out your roster <laughs> or get extra copies of characters. Um, and then, of course, you'll get all of the one and two star students that are also fantastic that come from that. So, yeah, <laughs> it's very, very good. So oh, that makes me happy that you all have enjoyed those videos. That's great. Ooh. But yeah, um, what I've been trying to do is I'm trying to um, intersperse other games. Um, like besides Blue Archive to play with you all. We just have had a lot of, um, <laughs> we've had a lot of Blue Archive events back to back. Um, but yeah, there's a different non-Blue Archive game I'm gonna be playing this month. Um, I thought about playing some more Honkai, um, but I'm kind of waiting on some of that because we've got uh, some characters I'm very excited for that will be coming in future patches. So I have been playing a lot of Honkai um, off stream though. It's been very good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess I can tell you all um, a sneak peek of the game that we're going to be playing this month um, that we should be playing next week, actually. Um, it is Volcano Princess. Um, I have been meaning to play that for a long time, so I think that it will be fun. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be right up my alley. Um, I've seen some folks play it and I've seen like a bunch of things. So yeah, I think you all will enjoy it. <laughs> I've seen a bunch of folks talking about it. Um, I even saw some people um, in the Discord being like, should we tell Yumi to play it? And I was like, don't you worry, I'm, I'm picking it up. <laughs> We're going to play it. <laughs> so yeah, I think that that should be pretty fun. Um, I'm a really big fan of indie games. Um, there's definitely some like really big AAA games that I play, but I'm a really big fan of like narrative indie games. So yeah, I think it should be pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's going to be very good. So uh, look forward to that. Um, I should have the schedule out shortly so you can see kind of what to look forward to this month um, as far as streams. Um, and then I will have like a membership stream near the end of the month. It's going to be drunk karaoke, so that should be fun. <laughs> I'm going to see how well I can actually hit the lyrics on some of this stuff um, with some drinks. So it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And then uh, we've got volume F and lore archive coming up. So yeah, oh, this is great, y'all. Thank you all for hanging out. I should find more time to do more Zatsudan because it's nice just to have like hang out, do freeform content, just chat with folks, talk about my favorite anime. <laughs> I guess technically I did a bunch of pre-preparation for that. <laughs> I put together a bunch of slides that wasn't necessarily free form, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> Talking about other stuff, so yeah, uh, I think probably what I'm going to do is I'll log off here. Um, I am so relieved that we did not have technical issues this time. Um, very pleased with that. 
I might have to mess around a little bit with OBS and stream elements to figure out why when I switch scenes, I get this weird black like flash. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. Um, I was reading up on some stuff and I might just need to reinstall stream elements is probably the deal. So, oh, no, and thank you. I will definitely try not to overwork myself. <laughs> Oh, Isaac, what harem shows am I going to drunk watch with Bear? That is a great question. We were actually looking for some stuff from this season. I was kind of disappointed. There wasn't a whole bunch of stuff, but I will keep you posted. Um, if that ends up being a thing, I'll include a section like that in future iterations of this where I'm like, all right, it's time to talk about the shows that Bear and I watched um, <laughs> with a couple of drinks um, and who we thought was the best girl from them. So... <laughs> Oh, you all are wonderful. I'm so glad that you all enjoyed the stream, that you were able to come and hang out. You listen to me ramble about a bunch of stuff. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, um, I hope that you all are doing well. I hope that your July has been going okay so far. Um, definitely look forward to some more stuff. Uh, I'll have a schedule and some other upcoming streams planned. So yeah, look forward to that. Oh. This is great. I'm so happy we got to talk about anime. <laughs> I've been wanting to talk about all of this anime for so long. Uh, so yeah, it's good. It's very good. And yes, no, you can absolutely check out the VOD later. In fact, what I'll try to do is um, with these particular ones, I've been trying to timestamp them right afterwards because it's morning my time. So it's a lot easier for me to timestamp right after the video. Um, it's a little more tricky with the, the evening streams because I'm generally really tired. <laughs> And I'm like, it's anime time. I'll timestamp later. But yeah, I should have this time stamped pretty quickly. So Ooh, anyway, you all um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Definitely feel free to uh, check out the VOD for anything that you missed. No worries whatsoever. If you showed up late, it's all good. And yeah, you all have a good one. I'll talk with you all soon. Bye.